This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Welcome to Strange Love After Hours. I'm joined, as always, by Dr. Normal. Hello. And this week, we're joined by Verso. Good evening, Cammie. Good evening again, Verso. I get the feeling I was just here. It's like deja vu. A little bit, yeah. All over again. Kind of, yeah. I just realized sitting here nodding at each other is not going to go well in the audio version of this podcast. No, it's not. It's always amazing what plays well Yeah. for the Ustream viewers. doesn't always play well for the MP3 listeners. That's, that's generally true. It's sad. So they don't know what I'm doing right now. I could be making funny faces at all the MP3 people. <laughs> um, and they'd never know. Ever. Except that I stopped talking to look at the camera <laughs> 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 to make funny faces. So this is the part of the show where we don't have to be strictly geeky, but I have a feeling. We're going to end up there anyway. We're going to do it anyway. (laughs) Yes. What's the first thing we want to talk about? I think we should talk about um, the shared geeky moment we had last Friday that just made you extra happy that I was going to be here this Friday. It made me so happy. Should we do drinks first, though? No, this is really special. Let us have our moment, and then we can talk about (laughs) the drinks. But I want a drink already. (laughs) Okay, fine. You can drink already. Really? Seriously? Okay, Seriously? But, but then we but then we get to have our thing, and you can't try to deter us. Yes. Oh, no. No, no. So what are you drinking, Cami Chaos? <laughs> Predictable as ever, Cami Chaos is drinking a Dirty Dry Bombay Martini. And tonight, um, by special... Well, by my request, based, <laughs> Inspiration. On a, based on a Twitter by Little Butterfly. Little I think Butterfly. so, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, very interesting She person. has single-handedly started a sake exactly. craze mm-hmm. I went in Shea Chaos. in the bar and found five uh, various sakis that uh, was were given to I me. I count four. I'm sorry, four uh, sakis. Um, so we'll, we'll just taste Clearly through these. Clearly he's had enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, for sushi dinner tonight, we had... Hakurutsuru from Japan, and we'll have um, a little yegaki sake from Connecticut. And wait, wait, I want to say that yegaki sake. I, I, I'm yegaki probably murdering sake. these names. And uh, Hakur- oh, another Hakurutsuru Superior um, in the blue bottle. And last but not least, from Japan, um, a Han. Hanamar, ugh. Hananomai Saki Katana. Ooh. Katana. Okay. Sounds sharp. So that's what we're going to have tonight. Well, that's what First time I had. I had a glass of sake earlier. But... Have some sake. Yes. And I can't wait, considering the <laughs> evening I've had so far. <laughs> should we put it in our. Should we show them all our beautiful sake set, too? Yes. It is pretty fantastic. If you can see this. That's a Christmas present that's from right. my brother and sister in law, Outlaw. So From that the chick, yeah. I recommend in the next week that <laughs> everyone who listens to Strange Love go out and get yourself a nice bottle of sake. And, and more importantly, tell special. us all about it. Yeah, tell That's us right. all about it. And probably have sushi with it. That's always yeah. a good idea. Mm-hmm. Mm, sushi. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you go ahead and drink your sake, and, and now Versa and I will talk about our special bonding moment at camp. <laughs> Last week. Last week was Camp Naughty, and uh, well, Aww, I, camp. it was beautiful. We're, yeah. We've decided to do it, really it again. Was. Thank you, sir. We're not exactly sure where and when and how exactly I, too, am drinking it. sake mm. with the doctor, just so you know. Is this the one we had at dinner? Yes, the, the last yes. bit of what we had yes. at dinner. Okay. Nice green bottle. Yes. A, I want, that's a nice flower vase. Keep it. Yes, it is. Okay. I like to reuse things. Yes. Um... So, it's, 
Yum. Clinky oh, glasses. We are in after hours. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor is pleased. The doctor is in and pleased. I don't know why I felt the need to add that, but I did. In his cups, maybe? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were at camp and we had a lovely time. And then it was time to go to bed. And we had two tents because one tent wasn't big enough for all seven women. No. So I went into my tent. Which was the tent of... Well, there was one tent. Doom? I thought, well, tent of doom? I thought we had named them individually. Oh. Maybe I'm I can't misremembering. Remember. Yes. But it was the tent that Giddy was in. It was the tent that Giddy and Media Chick were in. Media Chick were in. And so I'm thinking party tent. Like party tent. So as a host, given the option. Party tent. Exactly. So plus. So the rest of us were in the mere mortal tent. Correct. Plus Miss Burroughs and I. Well, I thought that Miss Burroughs and I should be able to sleep in the same tent. And Miss Burroughs said, if we do that. It's going to be all clicky and people's feelings are going to be hurt. Inexcusably rude. Yeah. Unbelievably offended. She said that everyone's going to be really offended and hurt if we choose to sleep in the same tent. Right. So I said, okay, fine. So when I went and split up. So everyone was split up. And when I went to go inside my tent, I realized. Ready to party. Ready to party with my my sleeping area in the middle between giddy and media chick hi giddy you should have been the meat in a party sandwich i should have been the meat in a party sandwich and we discussed earlier that i should have been the meat in the party sandwich but my my sandwich bread both of them were sleeping i had sleeping sandwich bread you guys let me know if you need me to get in on that (laughs) you know what i'm gonna go get a tool (laughs) They're having a hard time opening yes. a bottle. You know, let's save that one for That later. bottle? <laughs> Fail. Yeah, I yes. think that bottle so, wants to be consumed Yeah, Gaki from Connecticut. Oh, yeah, Gaki. We may not be. Yeah, Gaki Saki. We may not be tasting you tonight. Can, I, sh- we can I just try one time? Open We can't uh, outsmart the bottle, it seems. I want, I want to try to outsmart the bottle. <laughs> the blue looks a little more cooperative. Your mileage may vary. No. Mm-mm. Yeah, see? It's, it's the on. Gaki Saki is stuck. On to Hark- is Kutsuru secure. So I went into my tent and I laid down for like 0.3 seconds to be the meat in the getting media chick sandwich. And they were just clearly unconscious. And so I tried to console myself thinking, well, I'm sure everyone was very tired and everyone was going to sleep. When suddenly I hear giggling from across the way. Giggle, giggle. Giggle, giggle. Three separate giggles. Guess who it was? It was Miss Burroughs. It was the party tent. That was Mm -hmm. not going to be the party tent. Mm -hmm. Bad mom. Yes. Bad mom. Bad mom. And Verso. Yes. Awake and giggling. Yes. Without me. With the little Miss Burroughs. I was all by myself. So. Awake and alone. I I called out from my tent. Wait a minute. In the party tent. Wait a minute. There's a little Miss Burroughs? (laughs) It's like a mini me Miss Burroughs? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) One million dollars. So I called out to the party tent. Are you guys going to be awake for a while? To which we replied, of course we are. Yeah. Do you want to come over? Was it the communist party tent? <laughs> no, no. We didn't Did allow... Did you have to erase anyone's picture We didn't after? allow Holtol to come to the party. Oh, if okay. he'd been there, he would have <laughs> well, had the no, communist party tent. No, maybe he party was tent. at the party at Camp Naughty, but you erased his picture in all the group photos. Oh, yeah. We could have disappeared him, is what he said. Exactly. Well, then we would have heard his... He's um, fallen out exactly. of we would have learned. We would have learned how he lost his virginity. And his... Uh, Underpants preference. Oh, yeah, we would Even though we already found that out on Twitter. Ahead of yeah, that. he likes really panties. Roughly panties. Yeah. So anyway, I called out to the tent, and they said, yeah, yeah, we're awake. You guys can come in. Red Rover, Red, o- Red Rover. Let Cammy come Send Cammy on over. So I went in, and I noticed that on the floor was Kelly, or Verso, or whatever we're going to call you. <laughs> Wide awake. That's why I use my first name. Yeah. It, it makes it easier it for me. It does make more sense. Because I get confused. So... I noticed that Miss Burroughs was laying on her air mattress, which was almost as big as the frickin' tent. Oh, yes. It was huge, and it was just her on the air mattress. And so I said, can I come in? And they all said yes. So I went Of course you can. Yeah, I went and I got my stuff, and I brought it in and laid down, and I bounced and tossed Miss Burroughs around, and then she rolled over, and I think she may have been trying to go to sleep. Because there was a lot of giggling about, hey, this is like a bouncy house. Yeah. And Miss Burroughs was excited because she wasn't touching the ground anymore because her mattress wasn't entirely inflated. So with both of you on it, neither of you on the ground, very exciting. Very exciting. Yes. And bouncy. So very we tried bouncy. to settle, but I couldn't sleep still. So I pulled out my trusty iPhone to do and, iPhone-y things. And lit up in the night. And lit up in the night. And so I'm, I'm 
trying to work my iPhone and I'm having a hard time. And I exclaim, damn it, I'm on the edge. And I said, lame. Because I presumed when she said I'm on the edge that what she meant was the slow, unfortunate wireless data network that Mm -hmm. AT&T gave people on the previous generation of iPhone. Mm -hmm. The phone is awesome. The network is appalling. Not so much. No bueno. No bueno. So my reaction was, I'm sorry. That must be unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Or words to that effect. Something like that. Or that sucks. That sucks. That's lame. Yes, we were tired. Miss Burroughs, on the other hand. Oh, edge. I'm sorry. Fail. Miss Burroughs, on the other hand, said, there's plenty of room here. Why don't you just move over? over. And then we laughed at her. To which I said, what are you talking about? And she said, what are you talking about? Oh, that that was a really good Miss Burroughs impression. It sounded (laughs) just like her. And it was kind of entertaining mm-hmm. on a couple of, on, on a few fronts. Yes. The the biggest front being, of course, my presumed definition was the nerdy one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the correct yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Which turned out to be right. Yeah. And Miss Burroughs just wanted me to snuggle with her, I think. That was probably it. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. plus she doesn't have, she doesn't even have a cell phone, let alone an iPhone. I know. What does she know about iPhones? Yeah. And she's not in the chat room right now, so she's not. So listening. we can talk all we the can smack talk smack. we want. Who knows if she'll ever listen to this? No. <laughs> That's right. Did you like our story? Have she'll you? She'll never know. How many times have you heard that story, Mister Chaos? I don't know. Like <laughs> twenty times since camp. We could have let so him tell it while we drank sake. Ooh. So we got what? So you got the iPhone. We both have iPhones. Yeah. And what do you have on them? <laughs> Oh, wow. I believe it to be on. Okay, let's go. It's on. I'm going to take my case out. I don't want my case flopping around on me. Oh, it's not just on. It's on. All right. Are we ready? Hold on. All right. Well, did you go with purple? Yeah. Okay. For those who need a play-by-play, there's an application for the iPhone called Phone Saber. It gives you the lightsaber noise. See? And it gives you not only that, but all the lightsaber noises. Yeah. Which you means just that have now, to learn how to move it. Which means that now, the MP3 listeners, who have no idea what we're doing, and probably even the people watching the stream. Oh. I love you, honey. Han shot first. Thank you. Yes. Up. My brother has a t-shirt. It's my favorite t-shirt that he owns. It's a fine shirt. Stay out of the shadows. Not a foot, not a finger in the shadows. Do you safely back? Oh. oh. That was, that was early. Too um, early. Um, that was. Sorry. That was not Star Wars. No. At all. I don't know if she's seen that episode. Okay. Okay. Yes. So the the even better bit of this is that even the people on the stream probably can't tell that we're waving our phones, our around iPhones at each other, like crazy people. Having a lightsaber battle. Because you know what? I forgot to bring my lightsabers down. That's true. Because we have three. We could have even color coordinated because we've got... And if you had mentioned it, I would have brought my Darth Maul lightsaber. Oh, you've got the double? I do. Wow. We don't have the double. We've got Mace's lightsaber. Oh, yeah. Um, So we've got uh, blue, red, and purple. Nice. There's a Darth Maul lightsaber? Yes. The the double handle. The the double-ended... Do you have to pay like five ninety nine for that in the iTunes store? No, 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 not not, not phone saver, not the phone saver, actual honey. toy, oh, like I the toy, the plastic yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I actually have a story about that lightsaber. Why don't you tell us the story? So, I was waiting in line for uh, the Phantom Menace. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As um, you do, yes. I now know. Uh, like everybody did. Pretty much, yeah. That was kind of the thing. Was uh, I had it's tickets it. for two shows opening day? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I even saw that pile of poo in the theater like six times um <laughs> so anyway uh, i was minute. waiting what episode was pile of poo <laughs> well the first one. Oh. no wait, i saw wait. the first one six so times if in the, the first one was a Maul. pile of poo uh-huh. then tell me what you thought of the third one the thing that really bothers me about the third one i won't go too deep into my star wars theories but the thing that really bothers me about the third one is how much stuff got sort of forced in to go mm-hmm. really look this one came right before episode four. I swear. I swear. I'm with you. Those were the things I didn't like. 
I'm with um, you. The things and, that and were the subtle touches, I, like the Tentive Four can being I, the ship that they took, that would have been... How lame was it at the very end where they're like just adopting out the babies? They're like, oh, oh Jimmy Smith is like, oh, I've always spoiler. won. Oh, yes. everyone's seen it, right? Yeah. Anybody who's not but it seen is, Star Wars. But the thing that's confusing about that is that later on, when Luke is asking... Princess Leia about her Do mother. Do you remember your mother? She does remember. She her. remembers her mother. I know. I'm Just with you. flashes, really. Padme's freaking Ugh. dead, though. Freaking yeah. dead people. Which is also confusing. But I was okay. waiting in line. This is the part that was the the good bit of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, because really, after the the first after the first one, I was sort of stunned at what had happened. <laughs> really, I have tickets to see this again in like four hours. Are you, are, are, you, are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah. But before that. I was waiting in line, and I had my backpack with gear because mm-hmm. like I was you do. I was prepped. So <laughs> it sounds like we're being invaded from upstairs. <laughs> Elephants. Um. So I had my backpack. Mm-hmm. I had some candy bars. I had a bottle of water. Mm-hmm. Very and important. I took my lightsabers. Mm-hmm. I had bought these two lightsabers: mm-hmm. a Darth Maul and a Non. Mm-hmm. I think it was a Obi Wan. Lit saber. Yes. Yeah, wait a minute. Can, can I start? Have you ever seen the bit with uh, what's his name, the insult comic dog on Conan? <laughs> with the O'Brien, Star Wars line. With the Star Wars line. Yes. With I the love people that. all dressed as. <laughs> it's comedy brilliant. <laughs> it really is. And Did the, you see? The final punchline is this means you'll never ever have sex <laughs> with anyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you see the guy that got pwned in the iPhone line for trying to do the same thing? No. no. There's this video clip on the web of this uh they sent a reporter out to go cover basically let's mock the nerds in line so this guy stood out on the curb it was like a live remote you know i'm out in front of an apple store in the place and da 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 so he's standing out there he's like look at this line all these people are waiting in line for an iphone and then he says something about let's get to know some of the audience or something you know so the reporter Thinks he's being funny. No, he's not. Well, he thinks he is. Yeah. That makes one of us. Mm-hmm. So he thinks he's entertaining is all hell. And walks in, walks up to the line, and is standing talking to a guy and says to the guy, have you ever seen a woman naked? <laughs> to which the guy replied, do you really call this journalism? Very good. Which was brilliant, yes. in my opinion. And then was basically like, come on, dude. You know, get with it. Is this the biggest? And then I think the next thing he said was like, is this the biggest news you have today? Yes, it is. Maybe it is. For that guy. Yeah. Because no one wants to let him have a real story. Oh, I know. Because he's not Triumph the Insult comic dog. Exactly. He. W- I think basically it was like, you know, you're not funny. This isn't journalism. What is your deal? But the the thing is, like, the the thing for me was that he totally lucked out in getting picked on by this particular fellow because he wasn't angry and he, too, wasn't trying to be witty and failing. Mm -hmm. And it was very entertaining. And it was, like, my other favorite iPhone news coverage video clip. My favorite favorite is when the first one came out and that woman in Texas rolled up in her SUV because she had paid a kid. Like, she was going to give him 200 bucks to wait in line for her. Uh And one of the iPhones that she bought was going to be for him wow so she promised him i'll i'll buy you one if you will wait in line for me to make sure he was first yeah so he had to be there way ahead of, like days yeah. he was camped out so he was totally camped out and so she showed up and the reason she was news was because she brought like twelve thousand dollars because she was gonna buy every iphone in the store and she thought oh. she was so fantastic and what she was, was a complete see you next Tuesday. Oh, yeah. So, and she's smiling. She's sitting in the front of her SUV and she's like fanning out her hundreds, you know. And she said, and I'm just really excited because I'm going to get in there and I'm going to get all the iPhones. And once I buy out the store, I'm going to go home and put them all on eBay. And all the other people that are in line are going to buy them from me for way more money. This is such a money making proposition. No, it's so, not. Because it's not like the freaking we. That too. So here's the catch. Irritating. So she goes to the kid, gives him his 200 or 250, whatever it was. I think it was like $200. So she gives him his 200 bucks and he gets out of line. She takes his place. They open the doors. She walks in and says, I would like to buy 18 iPhones or 20 iPhones, Mm -hmm. whatever it is they've got. And and they said, I'm sorry, ma'am. The limit is two. (laughs) And one of them was already promised 
to the to kid the in kid. line. And so she basically got smacked down in the middle of the local newscast. But because it went on the web and there were people who were in line who were like, you know what you should really see? The wench that tried to buy the store out of iPhones to put on eBay and they would only let her have two. And she had to buy two because she wanted one and she had to buy one mm-hmm. for the kid in line because that was the other part of the deal. Mm-hmm. And now as an added bonus, he had someone else who was waiting in line a few people back for him. So he got to be like the fourth person in the store anyway and got to use his $200 to buy a case and a headset and what have you awesome. for the phone that she had to buy him. That is so awesome. It was phenomenal. It was one of the few times I've seen justice in action. Epic it really, fail. It really, really pleased me. So I had to tell that story. That's my other favorite iPhone video. You know what I find entertaining? When uh, when the iPhones first came out, I was still writing for Metro Blog. Yes. And <laughs> Weren't we all, honey? <laughs> and having a hard time thinking of things to write about. Yes. And so I wrote about the fact that I couldn't understand why people... And I stand by this today. I, I really do. That. I stand by this. Why people were standing in line, to, I think it was $500 at the time, Yes. to buy a $500 phone that they had never seen or touched before. Yes. And I thought it was ridiculous. Yeah, it kind of was. And I am, I am with you on that. I wrote a stinky, stinky piece about it. And I don't, I still stand by it. I love my iPhone. I pink puffy heart my iPhone. I think my iPhone is the awesome But you think it because you got to see and touch one before you went, yes, this is something I need in my life. Correct. My friend brought it over to the house and was like, look, Cammie. And and he did me in because he showed me my website on it. He was like, Cammie, look at your blog. Look, there you are. And all your little cute black and white and gray pink glory. Yes. And I was like, oh, no. I have to have one. And then my phone turned, like, my phone totally died. And I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited. Until Christmas Eve when Dr. Normal said, I need to give you your, your Christmas present. Oh. I know. And I looked at it and I was like, that looks like an iPhone box. <laughs> I'm just like looking at it thinking, it looks like an iPhone box. And I remember saying, shouldn't I open this tomorrow? And he said, no, you really shouldn't. And I said, if this is what it, it might be, I think I really need to open this tomorrow. tomorrow. And he said, no, you just need to open it now. It's like Christmas Eve, and all I'm thinking is like all the stuff I need to get ready for Christmas Day. Yeah, because I didn't want you to exactly. activate it on Christmas Eve and like, oh yeah, hey, hey. No, on well, Christmas you Day. know, maybe your phone will work in two days after. Correct. Everyone else after, is after the free world. Yes. So sure. he was yes. a genius. So I opened up the uh-huh. iPhone. See, whereas I'm thinking you've activated it, and now it's going to be people calling Christmas Day, and all of a sudden oh. something under the tree is oh, ringing. No, there no, you go. no. So he said, "No, you really need to open it." So I did, and then I just kind of went. But, <gasps> oh, yeah. but is, I freak. Isn't this just all subjects of strange love past? No, it isn't. I'm enjoying talking about my iPhone. Don't we have more important things to talk about? We can only talk about so much Doctor Who because Verso oh. and I are currently. I know, isn't he a good man? <sighs> He's a good man, right? Very much so. Even though he knows that I love David Tennant. Stay on the shadow. Have you seen that episode yet? See, she hasn't seen that episode yet. I don't think so. Mike, you're you're making problems here. It's still really not a spoiler though, because I have no idea what he's talking about. That's true, but (laughs) what we really need is the sound bit for the rambly video he gives to Martha. So awesome! Bingle bongle, bingle bongle, lippy tappy two ta. That bit. That's the bit. This has been destroyed. Now tell. How about that? Alex, that was lovely. It was lovely. I'm going to tell. No, I don't want to. Well, I don't want to say that. So never mind. I'm not going to say it. (laughs) I'm just going to say that somehow I managed to watch a couple episodes ahead from the American watching on the sci-fi network. Yes. And I thought that I had all the episodes. Yes. And episode 12, huge cliffhanger. Huge, huge, huge cliffhanger. That I don't Versa, know what it is, but yeah. I know that it's huge. Versa doesn't know about it. All, all I'm going yes. willing to say is that it's a huge cliffhanger. It's a very big deal. So I'm watching it. I'm freaked out. And I email my friend in the, in the UK. And I'm like, ah. And she'd warned me that I would yes. send her an email. Dear Lord just, in heaven, what do I do? She said, you're going to send yes. me an email. And it's going to say, no. Yes. Because our other friend did the same thing. She sent her an email. that said, no. Yes. And so here I am thinking, I'm screwed, cliffhanger, until like 2009 yeah. when season five comes out. Finally, yes. And I'm so upset. I'm yes. more upset than I have any reason or cause to be because it's a TV show. Let's be reasonable. It exactly. is a TV show. Yes. But it's, it's 
my favorite TV show. Oh, of yeah. all the TV shows that are made, it's my it's, favorite. For me, probably, it's. I know it's way up there. And the thing I really yeah. like about it is the thing that I think makes me partial to a fair amount of British television. Mm-hmm. And that is that they're not obvious and they don't feel the need to hit mm-hmm. you over the head with something. They presume Correct. people watching television Have a brain. can, in fact, find their butt with both hands in a yes. map, as yes. they say in my native yes. land. And... That's the kind of thing that I really enjoy in television. And it's just, th- it's, even though I didn't really enjoy the movie Memento, it's the same thing I liked about Memento. Yeah, I didn't like Memento. Was that they Memento, presumed, but someone they presumed I had a lick of Correct. sense and I would be able to keep up. I was Correct. able to keep up. It's I was able to piece thing. the story together. I just didn't dig it. But yeah, it was, a, it was really nice to have somebody go, you know, I don't need to spend the entire movie telling you and hinting around and tap dancing mm-hmm. around the fact that, yes, guess what? The kid is Indy's son. You know? Shh. Sorry. I already know that. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but I already know. Everybody knows. I also know the thing about the aliens. Yeah. Although I have to be honest, when when um, Martin and Miss Bro saw the movie and then yeah. they came back and reported to me. Yes. And he told me it was the aliens. Yes. I thought he was making fun of me. Yeah. I thought that's the dumbest storyline I've ever heard. Yeah. He's mocking me. Yeah. And I really, You're really. You're making this up. I didn't believe him until like my mom was seeing the movie that day and I called her the next day and said, mom. Martin said... Can you said, tell me about the last part of the movie? I said, can you tell me if it was aliens? And she was like, oh, yeah, it was aliens. And I was like, oh, my God. That's yeah. so dumb. See, and that's really the issue I had sort of with the prequels as well as far as Star Wars because I have to bring everything back to that eventually. Oh, we'll get back to it. Oh, I need to finish the Doctor Who story. Yes. So well, he, let me tell you this okay. bit, and that is that George Lucas should only ever get story credit, period. Him and James Cameron have exactly the same issue, and that is that they can tell a really good story, but they feel compelled to tell it themselves. And here's what I know, is that, like, let's see, 77, 80. So in, like, 1978, George Lucas walked into a room with, like, Lawrence Kasdan and said, here's what needs to happen. It needs to be dark. The Empire needs to totally be winning. Mm -hmm. Luke gets his hand cut off. (laughs) Find out Vader's his father. No! That's the end of the movie make it happen mm-hmm. and then leave and then came back later and there was a script mm-hmm. so if he if and james cameron really needs to do the same thing neither of them have any concept of how people actually speak in this no. universe or any they other don't and so what they need to do is go in and go leonardo dicaprio kate winslet on a boat boat sinks he uh, he dies the end that's what they need to be doing and once they did do you actually that, watch that movie all the way through um Sort of. Oh. We snuck some liquor into the theater, uh-huh. and it had been out so long by the time we saw it that people were cheering when he did die. Oh. So what we did he was... He died? Yeah. I haven't seen it all yeah. the way through. It was so bad. No. It, yeah, you I, don't want to. I fell asleep. And so we walked out, and there were still people lining up to see it. It had been out long enough Man. that people were cheering when he died, and yet there were still people in line waiting to see it. So it was at uh, Eastgate Cinemas mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. that was still a cinema, not a Russian church. And so we walked out, and I was like... Hey, watch this. I was with two friends of mine. And so I like stuck my finger in the corner of my eye to tear it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I whipped up some crocodile tears. (laughs) And I clutched onto my friend John for dear life and started faking the the big Uh (laughs) sobs uh and walked out of the theater and went, why didn't anybody tell me that the boat (laughs) sinks? And there was a woman Goodness. in line as we were walking away. The two of them were trying to comfort me and not laugh their fool heads off. Mm-hmm. There's a woman in line that went, oh, my God, the boat sinks. Wow. Yeah. I love stupid people. So now Are you a stupid a person? Who. Because I love you. Oh, I've got to finish this, the Doctor please Who story. Please tell me a Doctor Who story. So, so you sent this frantic email of, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes. How will I ever know what happens? Yes. The email she said you were going to send her, you actually Correct. sent her. And then she <laughs> said, you just watched the next episode. <laughs> And I said, no, that's the end of, <laughs> of the season. And she said, um, no, silly girl. No, there are 13. This There's time. 13 episodes. You're just missing one. Yes. So I was, I, I feel better so now. So have you used your methods to find this mythical 13th episode? I know where it's located, but no, I have not okay. yet received. I'm hoping that okay. someone will take pity on me. Yes. Because I will. And yes. I can, I can. I may know someone who lives there who may have who might have a legal way they well, may have like to procure it recorded it on Fly tape over and might send to it to the here. UK so you can Maybe I'll just go visit Holly it. in Cardiff. There Holly, can I come to your house and sit on your couch and watch your Doctor Who? And maybe while I'm there, I could get all caught up on my um 
So my can... my Torchwood. Because before you watch this episode, you really kind of need to be caught up in Torchwood. Yeah, that's the... Because f- I'm not caught up in Torchwood and I'm like, oh, I missed some stuff that I shouldn't yeah, know Yeah, I'm about. starting to feel like I'm missing some stuff, so I need to, I need to get yeah, into you that. Do. You yeah, you need, do. You need to... Because you'll... Yeah. It'll tell you stuff that you're like, oh, crap, I didn't need to know that yet. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're sneaky. They. Yeah. So one of these sakis yes. tastes like Blue Diamond Smokehouse Almonds. Okay, give me that. Nice. Give me. It's the one in the brown bottle there. That one there? Okay. Yeah. It's, it tastes this. like smoked Are you empty? No. sake. It's, I'm drinking, am I drinking the blue one? Y- yes. Okay. That one's pretty nice, actually. It smells like Smokehouse Almonds. Doesn't it? <laughs> Actually, the blue one's pretty nice. This one, uh, it's all right. I need to cleanse my palate here. With a martini? <clears throat> With some cool, refreshing water from my strange love coffee mug. Hang on. Woo-ha. Don't bother playing the music. I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay. Cammy is about to allegedly drink the liquid form of smokehouse almonds. No, I'm about to drink what is allegedly the liquid form of smokehouse almonds. That's true. Sorry. Yeah. It smells like it. Word salad. It smells and does it taste like smokehouse almonds? It kind of tastes like liquefied smokehouse almonds. I like how you stared at the microphone like the <laughs> microphone was somehow <laughs> responsible for the smokehouse almond sake. This is a really great microphone. I'm, I mean, have you seen it? It's all pretty and stuff. So it's, is it sake house almonds? Yeah. Okay. It's all. This is the. Hope they're not trying to poison me. Hana no, uh, Hana no sake katana. Oh, the sharp one. Mm. Yeah. Apparently katana is also Japanese. Now, when you drink it, it doesn't taste as much like smokehouse almonds. But when you just stick your tongue in it, it does. But it has a smoky flavor. It does. It's very smoky. It's not as salty. It's good. That's my favorite sake I've ever had, I think. I kind of like the smoky flavor. You might need to toss that in your Evernote and uh, keep track. That's right. Mm, I don't. I need to download my Evernote. There you go. Unless it's one of the ones I downloaded and haven't played Add with yet. Add that to your to-do. I have a, a to-download uh, to iPhone app to-do list here. <laughs> uh, under notes. Let's see. Um, yeah, Shazam. Shazam. And Evernote. I could not be fooling you less about okay. Shazam. Ever. Time for some fun. Well, she's doing so we've talked about fun. Doctor Who. So we like the Doctor Who. We yeah. Like a lot. Um, dude, I think we need to evacuate the premises. Is this about the new Trek movie? Oh, oh, the new like the before. Yeah, yeah the prequel, which looks kind of interesting. It does. Did look you interesting. have you seen the new poster? No, <gasps> I haven't seen the poster yet. Oh, the poster is hot. Yeah. I really like it. Well, what they did was they took, uh, they took, basically a large. That was for you, Verso. Thank you. A very special geeky. <laughs> it really jam was and mix. Too. We can go back to that later. Okay, we're talking about so, the new Star Trek now. There's a po- the the one sheet like the the promo that you see like uh-huh. in the theater as you walk to the movie that you're seeing. Uh, the the new one there's um, there's it's basically sort of split into fourths in the middle. And so each qu- each quadrant is a different color, and then there's a person mm-hmm. in each of those. And what they've done is the outline of those all together is the Starfleet symbol. So it's no, this, I'm, I'm, and it's like look it up. white up the sides. Mm-hmm. And then uh, actually, if you look up um, uh, Star Trek mm-hmm. Comic Con, okay, Star Trek. Um, because what they did was at Comic Con they took that poster and they split it into four separate posters. And each person only gets one. So you um. get this or this or this or this, each quadrant. Yeah. Um, but the one sheet looks really cool. And I really was digging it. So I happened to see it today. A friend of mine sent it to me, who's a very big uh, truck fan. Mm. Yeah. And just to show you the intersection of um, two of my assorted geekeries, mm-hmm. uh, one of the first things that I knit, that I officially knit, mm-hmm. um, because I mostly know how to crochet. And I decided I wanted to learn to knit, and I wanted to try to knit something small when I was learning how to purl. I wanted to try a small project, so I'd feel like I finished, I could finish something. That's why there are a lot of patterns for things like a quick hat, or a, yeah, a dishcloth, or things like that. Ooh, a dishcloth, so that, I could do so a that dishcloth. A, yeah. it's functional, it's mm-hmm. like something you can do, but also when you look at it, it feels as though you've made progress. Because yeah. like an inch 
on, say, a Doctor Who scarf doesn't feel very long because that's like 12 feet of scarf that you Yeah, but you know I'm going to make a Doctor Who scarf when I turn it. (laughs) Seriously, and I have a pattern. Um, It's going to take you like 12 years to make that scarf. That thing's huge, right? It's worth yeah. it if it has the name Doctor now, Who attached to it. It's just Tom Baker was the guy who it's just had that, right? The Tom Baker script. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. it, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. He's the only Doctor with that, yeah. And then there each was a doctor, doctor with the... Each uh, Doctor has their own distinct character. Yeah, there was one with the, yes. the, the katana sword, mm-hmm. and there was the one who carried the the, the Colt 45. Um, there was the one... You know, I gotta talk with the whole Colt forty five because that thing classically the doctor's not big fans of the gun. Oh no, this one was especially not David. It was actually the American doctor. Oh well, yeah, those freaking Americans. Yeah. No, you didn't see those episodes. You know what? Ages ago, Doctor Who was it began before I was born, so I've seen them, but I can't remember all of them. I saw a lot of them when I was a kid. No English accent. He just walk in and go, "All right." You're all dead. It was very, I think it was an early Clint Eastwood. That actually. scene in the beginning of Indy, in yeah, the first Raiders, exactly. in Raiders mm. when he just walks Pretty up like and Dr. shoots Who. Yeah, it I love that. That Doctor didn't last yeah. very long, because I didn't think it played Imagine well, that. He'd just walk in on the first episode and kill everybody, and then that would be the episode. Yeah. BBC what do you do was for like, the next 40 minutes? CBC yeah. was experimenting with um, yeah. violence. Yeah. yeah. And That's you the know interesting thing fact, about Torchwood right? is Torchwood is phenomenally more violent. Well, Torchwood is also... Yeah, for the UK, man. Yeah, especially for the UK, but they've also talked about how it's all very um, violent. It's darker. <laughs> it's like Doctor Who, but it's dar- darker and sexier. And I actually just and read an gayer, article. Maybe? Well, it is. Oh, it's oh, it's gayer. Right. Um, it's I, not even so much gay. No, is that, as guy, it, is that guy it's, actually really? Yes. In, in real, real life, life, he is gay. The guy and they allude to it all the time in the show. Yeah. You well, know what? I don't show, even think that the show is gayer. As I just think it no, doesn't. It's not, it's it not, doesn't put yeah. as much of a point on. But they don't. They don't hide it. They or sneak anything. it in, and it's very subversive. The article. I don't even think with, they sneak it in. I. Well, I they the just don't is, care. The article yeah. I was reading with Russell Davies it's is cool. that they treat it like it's just the way of things. Exactly, and I appreciate and that. And it's sort of with a wink, and they do it kind of, you know, fun. Like um, the moment I always remember is in the first season. There's a point where somebody busts into Captain Jack's office, and he looks up and says. I had a boyfriend that used to bust into rooms like that. That used to make an entrance like that. Yeah, he yeah. makes comments. I like hated that. it. Yeah, but the thing about him is that he's, he's, guy. he's basically just a Randy yes, fellow. It doesn't really have anything to do with whether you're male or female. And they set exactly. that up. They set that up yeah. in the Doctor Who series before right. you ever meet him. Before and, there and ever the was a Torchwood. Wait a minute. Correct. And one of the characters, ugliest guy I've ever seen in my life. Who? That guy. I know who you're talking about. He um, makes Will. He's like the love. He's child like the Willem Dafoe of Willem Dafoe and. Oh, name a really nasty, ugly stuck. actress. I mean, it's just like the guy is just really ugly. So it's not Captain Jack, and it's not Yanto. No, not Yanto. Yanto's kind of cute. Okay, the uh, other one. Yeah, the other one. And okay. then the other girl, the Welsh girl. Yes, Gwen. has bad teeth. Yeah, I'm really. I always feel distracted by the gap in her teeth, which <laughs> gives me kind of a hang up about the the gap in mine. Well, it, so it's, you know what? It freaks me out a that lot. tells you that this was produced Owen. in the UK. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it, yeah, because you don't get on American television no. without, no. I mean, it's like... No. Oh, no. Heavens, no. I mean, you got one tooth that's crooked. It's like, we'll be fixing that before oh, yeah. you hit the air, sweetie. Yeah. 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 And that's gotten more so lately because it's kind of funny to see... Wilford Brinfrey? Don't ask. Wilford I was really like... Brimley? Yeah. He has like Osmond teeth. Trust me. You never see him smile, but if you ever see him smile, trust me, he looks like one well, of the Well, they're probably Osmonds. dentures at this point, which helps. Well, the Osmonds all wear dentures. Actually, all of Hollywood does. They just or rip them all out, put dentures ew. in, and then put you on Stop. screen. Well, the thing about I think it's dental implants. Th- I think oh, that, I think that, that, okay. I think that um, I just had a dentist appointment. I had a yes. dentist appointment like a couple weeks ago, and I have another <laughs> dentist appointment in like ten days. I don't want to talk. You're not going to end up with dentures. I promise. No, I'm not. But I don't want to talk about the dentist anymore because okay. I'm scared of the dentist. But the dentist. interesting thing about that is that that's a recent thing. I was homesick. Um, I have a lot of sinus issues and I was home, like hopped up on some sort of narcotic cough syrup and Chris Rock was on Oprah. Don't ask. And uh, you when you're syrup? on drugs, sometimes yeah. no, that you really watch did Oprah. happen. I was just laying no. on the couch. No, I know. I believe you. I'm just saying you sometimes Oprah. have to Chris watch Rock Oprah when you're on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like the time the I accidentally watched Rachel Ray because I was flipping the channels yeah. and um, Harry Potter was on Yeah, it happened. and she kept touching him. She was like petting his arm and I was like, oh, woman. You need to get your hands off. Do you know that's illegal here, sweetheart? The man. He's like a little yes. baby boy. Stop yes. groping. So Chris Rock said, 
I can tell that you and I have been friends a long time, Oprah, because some of those clips were before I got my teeth fixed. Really? Oh. And so then I was like, uh-huh. And so really? I, watched, I was, of course, watching it on TiVo, live TV through TiVo. So I backed it up a few, and then I, all I could do was stare at his mouth. And then really? I'm like, oh, you're, you're right. Oh. He had like a gap. Oh, yeah, oh. I, guess, I guess he did. He only, it was very small, and like you couldn't yeah. really notice. But then all of a sudden, at one point, they were he like, like it an was, Osmond. all of a sudden, it was Tom Cruise's smile in Chris Rock's face. Yeah. It was mm. very weird. Yeah. So anyway, there you Osmond. go. Osmond. So. He's the yes. African-American Osmond. So the, <laughs> the thing, <laughs> I have to tell you, the thing Look it up. about Donny Osmond. Wiki it. Trust me, it's there. Donny Osmond is phenomenal, and I'll tell you why. Uh, okay, I'm not sure I'm going to buy it, but go ahead. <laughs> Donny Osmond is phenomenal because uh, because of basically one thing. Um, Weird Al Yankovic, when he went to shoot the video for White and Nerdy, mm-hmm. got Donny Osmond to be his I've backup seen it. dancer. I've seen it. And not only is he the backup dancer, but later they released video mm-hmm. that is the video of the two of them dancing through the entire song so that they've got all the footage to just cut to when they want it. I've seen it. And they are just acting like complete dorks mm-hmm. for four minutes. And it is awesome. And the fact that Donny Osmond can, A, cop to the fact that he's white and nerdy. Mm-hmm. One of the whitest, if not one of the nerdiest, definitely one of the whitest in America, mm-hmm. hands down. Didn't he get his ass kicked by Donny Danny Bonaducci. Did he? Oh, was that no. the celebrity boxing? Yeah. Yeah, but was it Donny Osmond or was this one else? I don't think I it was, was Donny Osmond. Osmond and I think it was Danny a Brady Bonaducci. kid. Donny yes, Osmond it was wasn't Chris a Chris Bra- Knight. Yeah, right. Chris Knight. It was Chris, Chris Knight. Chris Knight got his butt kicked by Danny Bonaducci. I don't know. I don't know. Why do I know that? Why did I know it was a Brady kid? See? See? We're pathetic. Yeah. But it was really In a good entertaining way. anyway. To, to, yeah. To, yeah. So there you Should go. I cue the music again? What music? So he's awesome. He's he He knows he's... Well, obviously, he knows he's very white. He makes he's money white off bread. of that. Yeah. And so very, very He's nerdy. not white bread. He's wonder bread. He's wonder bread. Mm-hmm. Danced around like an idiot for four minutes, knowing that it was going to get a lot of play, knowing that when your fans are weird out and that you are using lines in the video, like, or in the song, like, all my action figures are cherry. Mm-hmm. When you're saying those kind of things, you know that people are going to catch that and you know that that's going to be basically an internet sensation. Yeah. And so he knew going in kind of what he was signing up for and signed up for it anyway. Yeah. And if nothing else, I have to give him props for that level of self-awareness. Yeah. Because at least I know he can laugh at himself. I like people who can laugh at themselves. I do too. I don't like them as much when I know they're getting paid massive amounts of money to get them. This is true. I, I, I would accept on huge amounts hand, of money to laugh at myself. Anyone on the other hand, he could have done it as a laugh? favor for Weird Al. It's I true. Mean, he could have. I would assume being that white and that nerdy, they must both run in the same circles, at least occasionally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're really can See, only now I'm going to have so visions many. of like Weird Al and Donny Osmond hanging out, you know. Having Probably happens. Sake and a martini. <laughs> I, like, I like Weird Al. I who who do you think would I have the too. sake He's and who do you think would have the martini? I saw him do, if, if the think, best thing I did, saw is early on in his career yeah. when he got had like his hits. Yeah. You know, remember, I think one of his first hits was uh, Another One Rides the Bus. It was. Uh, oh like, God, I love that. That's mm-hmm. on the first on album. The, which was on the Dr. Demento show. Um, he was huge with Dr. Demento. And that was how he got his start, that actually. Time. That was the timer. Oh, okay. He took his accordion into <laughs> the bathroom of like yeah. the college radio station and recorded My yeah. Bologna and, on cassette tape oh, yeah. My Bologna and sent really it to good. Dr. Demento. Yep. yep. And I know this because I used to do a show much like Dr. Demento, and that's why oh, I know these kinds of things. Dr. Demento. Um, college radio, ladies and gentlemen. Giddy college thinks radio. that Weird Al would be the sake drinker. I have to agree with her. I don't know, because... Donnie's as Mormon as it gets, and sake is much closer to wine. He probably wouldn't go near the martini on there you go. religious oh, principle. Oh, he's Mormon. So back to Mormonism. That's why there are 19 the best of them. Thing, the best thing you got to see that, explains that it. Weird Al did <laughs> Yes. was That's a documentary about himself. Where oh, Did you no. ever see this? And it's, 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 it's awesome because it takes him through, you know, he, he's got the accordion, and yeah. he's at the polka band, and then he goes into the rock years, and he's got a trio. <gasps> yeah. And it's it's Jimi Hendrix. He's got the electric organ, oh, and he's awesome. got a guy doing Mitch Mitchell on the back, and the guy in the bass. Nice. And then he puts the organ up against the Marshall stack, <laughs> and then he throws his uh, or organ, his his accordion. Uh, accordion down on the ground, grabs out lighter fluid, <laughs> and lights the accordion on fire. And there's a crowd. That going I remember crazy. seeing just that oh, it's bit. Awesome. And it's, it's so awesome. Funny. And he put put this whole thing together in like this documentary yeah. about himself. I think he's got like a disco thing in there and everything. He did. Um, I saw him. 
last summer? Was it last summer? I think it was last summer in Napa Vine, Washington. Wow. And if at a Hockley is watching right now, and I know he's not, and he probably won't listen later either. But when he does, it was he and I who went to the show. Hello, Aaron. And there's a rumor. Who does not listen to my show, There Aaron. is a rumor. Or he's Adam, if that is your real name. Although there was a, uh, a typo on the Oregon State Fair website that he may be there. In really? September, yeah. Really? Mm. Wow. Yeah. At the Oregon State Fair. Yeah, because he's a State Fair playing kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him a few years ago at the State Fair. I've seen him twice. Wow. Now. I'm telling you, and if l- he's playing at the show, Oregon State Fair, it's hard to find a better show. You really like when I saw him in Napa Vine. He came out at the end, um, almost at the end. The last, the next to last song he did was Fat in the suit. God, I love yeah. that song. In the suit. I love yeah. that song. Yeah. In the yeah. And he goes out and he and he does all the moves. <laughs> yeah. It's like just... in the suit when it's all <laughs> Yeah, it uh-huh. the, he does all that stuff. Man, I love he that. He came out at the end and apparently it was like as a favor to a lot of his fans because he's never performed it live. Albuquerque, which is like a 12-minute song Ooh. about Albuquerque. Ooh. And the part I like is near the end when he goes A A L L B B Kirky! <laughs> That's the part I like the best. So you used to do a Dr. So. Demento type show? Yes, it was a in novelty. College, college radio. radio. It was a novelty awesome. comedy show, and it wasn't my show, it was someone else's. His but that's was, how she knows how to work the mic. Yes. All right. He, it was uh, Johnny D, was yeah. the actual host. and Johnny uh, D. And where was yes, this? And in LeGrand at in Eastern Le Oregon Grand. State College. Oh. And what happened was there was a song I wanted to hear. I have I knew That's what I do on the show, by the way. Oh, oh, oh Le Grand or <laughs> Eastern or Oh yeah. Tell us more. Verse, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm pretty good at that art. Top forty morning radio guy. <laughs> exactly. Oh, did, wait a minute. So, I, did did you want to sleep in my Dave bed tonight? Report. If you want to sleep in my bed tonight, that Chopper voice. Dave, how's just, the traffic yeah. out there? Yeah, he, he stays he, down here. He doesn't want to sleep in my bed, I don't think. I'm getting the... Look, I was the kid I that will. grew up with the Mr. Microphone. He's like, oh, hey, yeah. baby, how you chicks doing? What how the hell you yeah. doing? How you doing? Okay, so... So, um, what happened was he had played some song that reminded me of some other song that I knew and I wanted to hear. And so I called him up and the line was busy. And keep in mind, we're in LeGrand, so there's basically one line. You're on it or you're not up at the college radio was station. Was this the only radio station in LeGrand? Only no, oddly enough. Um, okay. A couple of AM and like an FM country station. They have a top 40 one now because this is before there was a lot of beaming satellite stations exactly. in where people came in and went, it's 23 minutes after the hour. So exactly. that nobody knew where it originated. You actually had to have a guy sitting in yeah. a shack with a microphone. Right. So what kind of a shack was he sitting in? <laughs> I'm sorry. What? I was thinking. Are you waiting for Love Shack, baby? Or oh, something else I, entirely? Was I, I, was th- I was torn between Love Shack and a Jack Shack. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. You want me to dial up some Jack? Oh, I think we've got it here. Is that Jack Shack music enough for you? <laughs> that's not Jack Shack music. No. At all. It's really nerdy. It's kind of the opposite. Yeah, that's so not Jack Shack. Like, if someone were in Jack Shack and you started playing that, they'd be like, what's that? Stop. Hell? I can't get it on with You're this. You're ruining the moment. Yeah. I hope none so, of you were trying so to Le jack Grand. off when he turned <laughs> that Grand, music off. novelty comedy show. Um, I called up. Line was busy. And I called a little while later and it was still busy. And I called a little while later and it was still busy. So what happened? Play Misty for me. Yeah. <clears throat> so what Those happened? desperate, aren't you? Yeah, not so, much to do in LeGrand. At the next staff meeting, um, I went, I walked up to him and I said, hey, I tried to call you last week. And I couldn't get through the entire time you were on the air. And I just wondered, like, is the phone having trouble? Are you just always on it? And he goes, yeah, I'm pretty much always on it. And what happened was he said that he gets lots and lots of requests from people. And there were people that would call up and give, like, dedications and things. So he was doing all of this stuff and said, the problem is I really want to get back into – we had two basic record areas there was because we still had records at this point, a lot of records – so far more records than CDs. So right behind the area where the magic happens on the air, there was the vault. And that was where records went. Everything went in the vault. We had like the deep stacks, which were called the crypt. He's like, yeah, there's all kinds of great stuff in the crypt I can't get to because I'm always on the phone. That's why you hear a lot of the same songs week after week is because I don't have time to get fun. anything else. Yeah, right. I don't have time to really go and dig for anything better. So I said, you know, I'll make you a deal. If you will, I will answer the phone for you if you'll play my requests. He said, that sounds phenomenal. Of course I'll do that. Nice. I was like, awesome. 
So I'll show up next week. And he said, great. So I became sort of a sidekick. He said, I just want to let you guys know someone's answering the phone tonight. And a uh, there's an old Cure song called Banana Fish Bones, which is where that all started. Right. Because then he said, answering the phone this evening, we have banana fish bones. There so we go. So that's how it all began. So what happened was I would answer the phone and then do request, and he would do my request. Ooh, that song reminds me of this other song, but you know what I really want to hear by the Frantics tonight? It's not Taekwon Leap. It's, you know, um, Last Will and Temperament. There we go. That's what I want to hear. And he's like, awesome, I'll play that for you. Let me grab it. So he would have a chance to grab whatever records he needed out of wherever they were, and I would get to answer the phone. So I was making requests for people. We were like a message board for like eighth and ninth graders, like the kids who couldn't drive, who were like really into Stan Freeberg for reasons I don't really understand. <laughs> okay. Um, Tom Lehrer, there was a lot of Tom Lehrer. Poisoning Pigeons in the Park was a favorite for a long time. Yeah. And uh, so eventually what happened was, I don't remember how, but there was a point where um, I started doing a little bit of the show. Like I took over for a little bit so he could do something. So I was doing a little bit of announcing. Now, now, was so this, there was like a was little... This, did you guys have a professional relationship? I knew him through the radio station period. That was it. Okay, but this was a purely professional. I mean, you know, it's late at night. You're doing mm-hmm. a show. That was normal. Was asking if you got naughty with him. Yeah, not no. Oh, oh no. Okay. okay, with a DJ at the radio station, yes, but not this guy. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, Bing, Bing, Bing. We have yes. a winner. <laughs> Yes. Are uh, we, are I'll we tell we you the naked it? radio story when we're off the air. Yeah, are we no. doing Camp oh. Naughty? <laughs> the chat room is crying for it. Uh, I, I speak for the chat room. I doubt that. Giddy's probably saying, please, Lord, no. Giddy's a little distracted. She's want, trying to figure out if Will Raddick grew up in Vacaville as well. <laughs> so. He seems to know too much about the nut tree. And they, uh, and yeah. they all want to know about Oh, wait, here we go. But anyway. 17 people just all logged into the chat room to say, we <laughs> want to know about the naked DJ story. You really don't want to end well. No, it's okay. You can tell us later because then I can lord it over people. <laughs> I if like, you'd been listening. I like having yeah. things to lord over people. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay. It's so true, what happened was then I got a portion of the program where I got to nice. play like three or four songs and it was called Banana Bits and it was the what? things Banana I wanted to play. Now, now, do you know how yes. she got her name? No, I had to go upstairs and I know, you something. totally missed it. Yeah. I never miss, m- normally Dr. Normal misses stuff. Banana Lee Fishbones. Yes. Does that ring a bell at all? Banana Lee Fishbones. You know, there's this chick that used to write for okay, Metro Blocks when I wrote for Metro <laughs> Blocks. No. And she's a big fan. I know. That's what's crazy. Is it a Weird Al thing? No. What is it? It's a radio thing. It, be, it was my name on the radio. Why but was it with this show in particular? But the way you got the name. Because, how did you get yeah, the name? It's an old Cure song, and I had mentioned to Johnny, "Hey, um, what you know, song? Oh yeah, my co- it's called Banana Fish Bones, but it's all one word." And I huh. said, "Yeah, my my you cousin used it. to threaten like she was going to name her firstborn Banana Fish Bones just to get back at her what mom because that was funny." I can't remember. I know, I know, and I know that you'll be able to find it out. I will. I'll find it. Yeah. And Cammy's a big Cure fan, too, yeah. so I'm really surprised you didn't uh, pick up on so that. I am, too. That's what it was. And so then it was Banana Bits, and the best bit of Banana Bits, in my estimation, was... It's so cute, Banana Bits. <laughs> the part it that we really called cute. Chipmunk Theater, because ah. we still had a lot of vinyl. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we would play things at 45, and then we would explain why, for whatever reason... Um, this particular audition didn't make the cut. Yep. These were the lost audition tapes for the chipmunks. And so it would be things like when Shaquille O'Neal put out his rap album, mm-hmm. we played that at 45 and said he mm-hmm. didn't make it because the height requirement. You mm-hmm. can only be this tall and he was way too tall. And uh, You stole my garage show when I was a kid. <laughs> Billy Corgan, he didn't make it in. We played Today, but it actually was a record that was played at 45, so I had to spin it with my finger on the turntable <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> Nice. So it gets kind of slower and it gets a little faster and it gets a little slower. And uh, it's they didn't get along because he mm-hmm. was incapable of happiness. And so he I, wasn't allowed to be a chipmunk. I have to interject. This is awesome. I looked up banana fish bones, all one word. And yes. the first thing that came up was a Wikipedia entry. Yes. Written in German. <laughs> yeah. Uh, und Thomas <laughs> will die band und... Wow. I don't speak German. Oh, Can you tell? <laughs> um. How do you pronounce die in German? Is it D? D. D. D? That's what I thought. Yes. Und Thomas del D. Band. D. Bart. Und Binnen sich. That's, not what, my, that's not what my tattoo Titel. says. It says Von D. Bart. The D. Cure. They're off them album. Okay. The top. Okay. The top. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. 
Zoom. I can't okay. read German. Thank you very much for the German I, hour. Yes. I can count it's on in the German. Top. There you go. Yeah, I, I can count in Wo German. I can't Sie? speak it. Yes. Yeah. Die Sonne scheint. Um, hey, baby. Sehr gut. I, I need that album. Und ihr? Yeah. yeah. I think <laughs> it's on um, um, iTunes. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Wie and if it's not, Sie? they've done. Um, Please I stop they... speaking German unless you want to say that George Clooney's pig is dead. <laughs> yeah, no. <clears throat> I have to tell that story now. No. I think that. Um, <laughs> I thought they did like you remasters recently times. of those. Mm -hmm. So you may be able to find like a, a nice remastered edition with I'll maybe some up. bonus stuff. Um, the Depeche Mode remasters, by the way. Oh, Depeche Mode. Very, 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 very mm -hmm. nice. Um, they you know, I have something on them. I have something. <laughs> Um, Sweetie, isn't that the guy from Depeche Mode? I love no, no, wait, where? Holy crap, oh, he's with a girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy is totally straight. I saw a whole thing about him on the VH1. Oh, he's yeah. the guy from Depeche Mode. It's impossible. Straight. Come on, he's in Depeche Mode. I always loved that part. Yes, I am known to men as Dr. Orpheus. <laughs> he's not is cutting his sound. And control it's the delicate arrangement of the cosmos. They give yeah, up I keep forgetting to hit that. that. Junior Eric. College Upstate, communications major, minor in women's studies. <laughs> but I assure you, sir, the doctor title was bestowed on me by a higher power than a mere college professor. Speaking of doctors. How many doctors do we want to speak of? <laughs> well, it's kind anyway, of a doctor-themed episode. The Depeche Mode it soundbite was the one yes. from, from the Venture Brothers. Tag Sale. Yes. God, ta oh, tag Sale God, is my best favorite episodes. episode. It really is. Oh, it's it is, so good. It is oh, my favorite. Tag sale well, that, I also really like the one with testicles testicular torsion oh yeah that's, that's a, a good, good one, one too. too yeah i just yeah. love the bench i do like I, I like i'm actually i'm actually married because of depeche mode really Aww. really because mr fishbones before he was mr fishbones, hi mr fishbones <laughs> um, was in depeche mode <laughs> he was in depeche mode i thought with a girl no <laughs> exactly um, yeah but he's with a girl that guy's totally gay <laughs> oh uh, no, what happened was um, I'm I used to hang out. Working on my doctor girlfriend, by the way. That's good. It was IRC back in the day. Yeah. Oh, I know why you and, and Mr. Fishbones and he oh. sashayed into the channel one day, and we had a bot, which was like this little script that kept the channel open, and it would when you showed up, you could tell it what you wanted it to say, and it would sort of announce you. So it would say Doctor Normal has joined the channel, and then it would say. Dr. Normal, you know, bringing you sound bites since earlier today or whatever, you know, witty thing that you had that you wanted it to tell you. So he picked a random Depeche Mode lyric that was not like from Enjoy the Silence or Strain like a, a hit song. It was kind right. of an obscure one. Right. And so I sent him a message and said, because there was a way to do sort of private messages. I know. And IRC. I, yeah. And I sent him was one. Was it a hashtag or something? I can't remember. What was uh, it? Slash MSG slash, and space. Slash, that's Nick, it. That was it. was space slash. message. Yeah. Yeah. Slash me, I still use and stuff even if I don't go. think about it. And so I said, hey, I know that. That's a Depeche Mode song, and he, isn't it? And he said, yes, it is. And I said, I like Depeche Mode too. What other That's bands that. do you like? And it was a very like first grade, you know, I like eating paste too. Let's be friends. Was, was this in La Grande? No, I was living in Corvallis. At Corvallis. The time. Oh, yeah. big city. Accidentally, yeah. actually. Yeah. And so what else do you Accidental like? Accidental Corvallis. Yeah, that'd be a good band, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Let's go grab that. Quick, grab that URL. Dot com. Yeah. Dot me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was how it happened. And I just started talking to him there. And uh, that was like the summer, summer or late fall of 1995. Wow. Yeah. In a couple of weeks, we will have been married eight years. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Got him off the internet. That's the best place to get people that's to meet what people. i think too and it all happened because of depeche mode in fact you shouldn't meet people in real you should only meet people on the internet yeah especially in chat rooms you know and when yeah. they sound like really sincere and they want to meet you and they really let's just meet the two you. of us meet you know don't you don't have to bring a friend or anything it, let's just meet. it ain't gotta be at denny's exactly let's just go to the park at like exactly. midnight exactly that's the best way hands down the best hands way down i'm with you i'm with you doctor this show needs a disclaimer. At the <laughs> That's on my to-do list. You know that. Don't try any of this at home. <laughs> the opinions expressed on Strange Love Live <laughs> may not necessarily be a good idea to anybody, even the person speaking it. I know. Even though we have an explicit tag, 
Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I need to work on that. There Most should be, like, an explicit tag and, like, a don't try this at home tag. Because I don't know that necessarily things like jackass are explicit, but, like, stupid. Yeah. Which is not the same. At all. And didn't you... No, it wasn't you. Somebody said they saw him on a bus. Oh, I put it on Twitter. It was yeah. a celeb sighting. I yeah. totally didn't, but it looked like him. Yeah, you, it, it was yeah. you. Yeah, was it like, had like the same. He had like the same face and the aviator glasses, and he was taking up like a seat and a half and was very kind of over to the side see, I and think, like see, half and that's, asleep. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking it's not him. That's a look. That's a style. Yeah. Well, know? and the reason I did it was for the DPP celeb account yeah. for the Delta Park Project. Another. Another podcast I enjoy. They do pop culture, movie oh. reviews, kinds of things. Yeah, Jason Ooh. and Anna are delightful. And cool. Jason started an account for basically fake. <laughs> Unlike Strange Love Live, where we do nothing and we're undelightful. But, but no, uh, if I was on their, if I was a guest on their podcast, I would say, you know who's got a good podcast? Strange Love. Oh, they no. do an awesome podcast. <laughs> they don't yeah. suck. Yeah. yeah. And Cami and not Dave. They're delightful, delightful people. So anyway, dude, um, I'm glad his name is not Dave. I've, I've known a lot of Daves, some very nice Daves, but I don't think I'd ever marry a Dave. Yeah. That's just slim. Yeah. So the he probably wouldn't Delta Park Project. Delta Park Project. And so they put up this like fake celebrity sighting account for DPP Celeb. Nice. So you add it, you know, I saw. So, and then for some of them, they've got like pictures of the person that they were, that they were tweeting about. Right. So who sort of looks, who looks like whoever it was that they, so when, like when my hair was very, very long and I didn't have contacts at that point uh, and I was wearing my glasses, like someone may have taken a picture of me wearing some tragic shirt and been like, Kennedy sighted at Whole oh, Foods, there you, go. <laughs> you know, buying stupid crap. There so, you go. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I do that. We do that all the time. There was a guy at New then Seasons. you really need to follow DPP Celeb. Yeah, I do. <laughs> there was a guy at New Seasons, a checker. Yeah. David for a Bowie. While, looked just David Bowie. like. That's so funny. A young David Bowie. Okay, did you in see fact, I was just like, David Bowie was in Portland, <laughs> had an affair, and this is his kid. The result. Wow. I mean, this guy. I thought he had himself cloned because he looked wow. just like a young David looked Bowie. Just, wow. I'm like, and and you know, I'm I'm always like the shot, and then I look, and then in the line, and I'm yeah. elbowing Cammy. You know, like, oh, look over. No, it was worse just than look, that. Look. We're at the grocery store. I'm going to tell the story because I think it's entertaining. We're at the we're at New Seasons. Yeah. And I'm doing the shopping, and he comes up and he grabs me. He says, did you see him? And I said, who? And he said, David Bowie. And I said, what? And he said, the guy that looks like a young David Bowie. Did you see him? And I said, no, baby, I haven't seen him. He said. I'm kind of a stalker (laughs) that way. (laughs) He (laughs) said, we have to go through his checkout so you can see him, okay? Okay. And we're getting ready. Mike's entire in-town family and several people from Germany are going to be at our house in a couple of hours. And so we're trying to get ready for this. And I'm trying to think, what else do we need to pick up for the barbecue? And all you can think about now is, why is David Bowie checking groceries? Exactly. Why is David Bowie checking groceries in Selwood? Yeah. And why can't my husband control himself? (laughs) So we go through the checkout line, and I see what does, in fact, appear to be a young David Bowie. David Bowie. Heroin chic. There you go. And I don't say anything because I'm sure that the poor kid has to hear if he even knows who David Bowie is. That's always kind of what I wonder too. Yeah. It's like you see somebody like that and go, wow, is it, you know, so you ever tell you you look like a young David Bowie? Who's that? Yeah. You and know, he's probably heard it a million times, but doesn't know who David Bowie is. That's the one is. thing. You, you're just like looking at the person and staring at them and they're like, what is this person? And yeah. you're like, I'm not going to say it. Yeah. I, I didn't stare, but you did. You were creepy. Because that guy probably <laughs> would, you know, be like, well, I, I, you just want him to go, yes, I know. David yeah, Bowie. so no, so the story gets better. Yeah, I, I get, get to blame it. David Bowie for an injury. My name's Steve. So we get home. <laughs> we're unloading the car. I'm bringing some stuff downstairs. Yes. Um, and I'm like, Mike, you've got to put on David Bowie. I need to listen to David Bowie right now. I'm freaking out. I'm insisting that he put on my David That's Bowie what I album. To do in line when he was like checking, I wanted to just like. Rebel, rebel. Correct. <laughs> exactly. We were the young so I'm coming downstairs with like three bottles of olive oil and something I else. I said we were the young Americans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what? Exactly. Nothing. So I'm exactly. coming down the stairs and he's like kneeled down in front of the little stereo setup, getting it set up to put my David Bowie on. And I'm like yeah. rushing down the stairs to make sure he gets the right album so on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Exactly. Um, 
and I slip. I miss one step in my excitement. I miss one step. All of the olive oil bottles go flying up in the air. I twist my ankle, and one of the bottles lands on top of the ankle I twisted. None of the bottles break. Thank but God. I am severely wounded. I'm oh, like sprained ankle. Injured. I am so much in pain. Because Missed the last step. Total failure. Dreadful David Because Bowie. of David. Because I'm so excited to hear the David Bowie music. Yeah. So did you see the link I posted today to the uh, Flight of the Concords album mm, covers? No, I didn't. I didn't. I, right. you, you need to. I wasn't on my computer. I was on because my iPhone all day. a piece of it. I was in the bathroom. <laughs> there were. I was. I was no, laying he, a uh, subfloor. He was laying a. He was laying a. There's, um, you want to help me uh, finish the bathroom? <laughs> if you'll help me start mine, I'll help you finish yours. Do you need to remodel your bathroom in the worst way? Do you have more than one bathroom? No. Oh, that sucks. That's a lot. Be bad. Yeah. yeah. Be you need a porta a potty. For a while. So you have to go see this uh, this link I posted. And okay. I was like, yeah, I know it's April, but I just found it. That one, because yeah. um, yeah, because there's some really good some parodies. It's the two guys whose name escapes me at the moment from the Flight of the Concords. Mm-hmm. And they recreate some famous rock pictures. Oh, nice. And they're pretty awesome. Like the nice. first one, the first one alone is phenomenal. But then you scroll and it's even better. Wow. Yeah. So, so if this you is see on your Kimmy, blog, you gotta right? check it out. No, this is just my on Twitter, Twitter stream. Yeah. Oh, your Twitter stream. Oh, geez. I missed that. Yeah. But your I, blog, you, you never even said where her blog was at. I'm sorry. Yeah. Versa, where's your blog? It is at thebananaverse.com. And the other night, you totally said that you were going to post a blog, that you were writing a post. And I was all excited. And I was all like, yay, something new at the Bananaverse. And then you didn't. Um, What happened was, I was ready to put it up. I was working on it. And I couldn't get into my admin interface because I did something wrong with my Treasurelicious widget. Denied. And it didn't break my blog. It just broke the admin panel to my blog. So I couldn't get in and do anything with it. Was this where you were sending out those tweets? Help me with the Treasurelicious. Yes. Yeah, that, that was sucks. me going, help, help, help. Did Martin contact Broken. you? Yes. Good. So I that, have to That took through. support at Treasurelicious. It's fantastic. It's That's right. phenomenal. That's right. If yes. you happen to know I was right actually. People. I was actually contacted by two representatives of Treasure Delicious. Wow. Oh, fantastic. Just to ensure that I was A, taken care of, and Were any B, of them from resolved. Bolivia or Brazil? Sadly, no. <laughs> okay. Okay, so how many hours ago would you estimate this tweet occurred? It is now 11.26 p.m. What? I don't know. But okay, n- was it you, before or after you talked about becoming a brown coat? This is... Ugh. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. That's Around a good that time, probably. Okay. Um, look for the one that says, I know it was April, but I just found it. Okay. So if so, you type, if you find, if you do a search on April, it'll be there. That so, was where I was trying to head earlier with speaking of doctors, because it's a very yeah. doctor themed evening this evening. Yes, it yes, is. We've got button pusher Doctor Normal. We've covered yes. Doctor Who. Yes. And uh, before or after, I'd like to make a dialect out of bacon. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, they're all. And I have to say, now. yeah, there's a there's a dirty, dirty secret. Pet Shop Boys about cover that one. There's a dirty secret about the Dalek Bacon tweet. I said overheard. Ooh. It was me who said I, it. You know what? Of course. When I saw it, I was like, she's a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I thought, how actually, can I get her to let me help her? Actually, make it's funny. Like, <laughs> Every time you tweet, it. that's what she says. That's what's <laughs> hilarious. My fucking liar. That verse. Wow. Says, my fucking liar. See, now I feel like I need to tell better lies <laughs> just to, exactly. to be more entertaining. Well, because at least that would be fun. This is a podcast of lies. That's the beauty. Awesome. Exactly. So, okay, so the doctors. top one. Check out the top. No, I can't find the tweet. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, I found it. You said Pet Shop Boys cover, and I said yes, that one. <sighs> and this is yeah, where the show goes into the Yeah, but that was a totally separate tweet. Toilet. You were responding to Michael Sigler. Oh. <sighs> Hello, Michael Sigler. Hi, I'm Michael Sigler. This is where the show goes in the toilet, where Cam and Chaos reads the is internet. It this page? <laughs> yes, it's that as one. if you all can't go out and read the damn internet yourself. Yes. Would you rather read the internet yourself, or would you rather have Cam and Chaos read the internet to you? Well, we have. I would hit rather the wiki have you page. read me things about like sports, reading sports pages in Thailand, because that was a lot of fun. I yeah. really wish that Miss Perez had left that card game here. That would have been awesome. Yes. I might have to go and get that. Oh my god. <laughs> okay you're seeing it now aren't you so we're the doctor and i I'm are going to talk about i'm another just going to bookmark this okay yes. so what happened was dr horrible that's yes. where we are now dr horrible yes 
And uh, the laun- and, and don't and forget the brown coat thing too. Cause the laundromat song. Oh no no, let's talk about the brown coats first. I oh, I see. love the laundromat song. Let's talk. About, so, did you say you were going to join the brown coats? I kind of am. Yeah, I know I a few brown like, coats. Not in any sort of official capacity. Uh huh. What I mostly meant was, um, this is sort of my my shameful shortcoming, is that I've only watched bits of Firefly. It's okay. I don't know how I never managed to sit down and enjoy the entire thing. I've got it. Now, the, are you talking about the movie or the, no, the, the show. TV show? Okay. Yeah. I share your shameful secret. Maybe you should share. Maybe you should help me watch but it. But you're then. not a brown coat either. Because no, no, what I'm happened not. was, I was people were apparently running around going, oh my God, this is just like that episode of Buffy Once More With Feeling. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Exactly. Just like Once More With Feeling. Yeah. And then someone else going, and of course I love Nathan Fillion because Nathan Fillion was in, obviously was in Serenity. He was also on Buffy the Vampire Slayer though. But not as... And he was one mean, evil son of a Not as obvious. He wasn't like a main character. That's true. So people were like, oh, this is so great. This is so so awesome. So Dr. Horrible, it's officially, it's called the Dr. Horrible sing-along blog. And it's lovely. And Dr. Horrible is fantastic on every, and I mean every, imaginable front. The only way it's going to be better, because I have yet to see Act 3, is if he does end up taking off his shirt. That's really... And it's not like that's going to help me anyway. doogie. And it's not like that's going to do me any good anyway, because he is one of my people, which is different from being a person on my team. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> that's kind of a problem. Anyway, Dr. Horrible. So I keep telling Cammie... The two of us are sitting, we're eating dinner with Yum. Minnie Cammy and the doctor. And we're sitting there and I keep going. So there's this part where he goes, yeah, sarcasm. That's original. That was lovely. And the laugh at the beginning. Cammy, you got to see this. Oh, wait till you see the laundromat song. I've been humming it for the last four days. So finally she breaks down, busts well, out the EPC. I want to say why. And goes the thing is it. I went to watch it and I got through the whole thing with the evil laugh. And the submission, you know, submitting yes. the letter. Uh, and, emails. And then I stopped. And, and just when he started the emails, and then I stopped because I was like, I'm just going to watch this, and then I'm going to watch the second one, and then I'm going to be pissed off that I can't watch the third exactly. one yet. So I decided I would stop, and I wouldn't watch them at this all. This goes back to your iPhone experience. You yes. want everyone to have the early adopter experience and get screwed and, <laughs> exactly. and, and be miserable. I want to reap the benefits, and I want everyone and else to be miserable. When, when they're all done, you come in and play cleanup, and it's like, oh, great. This is great. Yeah. I. I uh, I really enjoy that. But the problem is, is by the time you do that, when you come in and do that on a trend like an iPhone, like a Doctor Horrible or whatever, then you're like, oh, I've just got this new iPhone and I'm watching Doctor Horrible, and like everyone's like, moving on. You know what? That's that's yesterday. That was like three hashtags ago. Exactly. <laughs> now we're sticking mm, things hashtags. in our ears yeah. or something. Hash browns. You know? You know I don't like to We've put totally things in moved my ears. on to the bacon Dalek. And, and, Dr. Yeah. Horrible was mm, so exactly. yesterday. Bacon Dalek. Exactly. You know, I think I just skipped. And it happens on Twitter. Skipped the it happens Dr. on Twitter. Man, yeah. I want nice. the bacon Dalek, though. If you're not up after hours and you're getting the flow, or, or, by, by the morning, you're done. You're, you're out of it, man. Why doesn't oh, yeah. anyone eat deviled ham anymore? Ugh. Because it's deviled <laughs> ham. Dude, I want to make a, I don't want to eat it, but I want to make a deviled ham sculpture of a Dalek. See, that would be all right. Yeah. I would totally get behind that because I would never, ever eat it. No, I wouldn't eat it either, but I wouldn't want to keep it in my house either. No. I bet you, and don't do this right now. Okay. But I bet you if you Googled deviled ham sculpture, you'd come up with but, something. Oh, I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would, but it probably wouldn't be a dialect. Da- Dalek. 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 Wait a minute. So I was watching, because when I got the, um, <clears throat> the copies of Doctor Who yes. from a completely legal source, I also got the confidentials that they play. To yes, go with each episode. Which are lovely. And I was watching this amazing one on the making of the dialect through time from the first dialect yeah. through now. And I was just. Like I was. How they, when they first I was all The history Twitter. of them because they're very, Freaking very old. And then, and then yeah, this is really the exciting alien. part though. This is the exciting part and the part that Dr. Normal might be able to get behind. They had the original creator come on. Okay. Nice. And check out. Okay. He's not nearly as cool as I thought he was. When Jack and Yanto are. All oh, like when they're hugging and yes. and they're trying to be kind of secretive. Oh, yeah. It just um. So there was yeah the clamped. the first episode with Spike. The first episode of season two. Has, I haven't seen it. Okay, the first episode of season My two. My source has Spike in it. My source has not provided it for me. James Marsters. Yes, I love him. He's awesome. 
And my, my, cat is, my cat is named after me. It's, it's like one. <laughs> it's like one. Um, Does is he pretending to be British a, in it? Yeah. Oh, good. You can he tell, sounds funny when he's are. American. Um, he they have a very passionate relationship. So mm-hmm. part of the time they're punching each other, and part of the time they're kissing each other. So basically, as soon as I saw it, um, I went running over because the the friend of mine happens to be a coworker. Mm-hmm. So I went running over to his desk, you know, with much hand waving, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And kind of forgot that he works with three other people who are not gay. Ah. And went flailing up to his desk, and they're all, of course, within obvious earshot. Mm-hmm. I went, "Oh my god." You have to watch Torchwood. Why? He's like, well, what is it? I'm like, it's this offshoot show of Doctor Who. Well, why do I have to watch it? Because it's hot dudes kissing hot dudes. <laughs> and he's like, blink, blink. Huh? And I said, okay. It's so on British television. It's this guy who's hot. And then he's kissing Spike from Buffy. And it's hot. And he's like, okay. And of course, the other three Tune. are like, but they know he's gay, Verso. right? Oh, yeah. But okay, they're like, good. Verso, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> like, it's hot dudes kissing hot dudes. And like, come on. Doctor Who's been off. I'll watch it. You, you slap Seriously. Doctor Who on something, oh, and I'm know. like, yeah, I endorse that. Of course Doctor Who is the goods. Yeah. Cammy fully endorses Doctor Who in all its many, many forms. Unless you guys kill off David Tennant, and then I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to hunt you down. Okay, but you I'm do have you to around. admit Christopher Eccleston made a damned fine doctor. You know, here's the thing. I watched season one mm-hmm. of the new Doctor yeah. Who and I just loved Christopher Eccleston. I thought he was amazing and perfect and He's I thought, brilliant. how were there any other doctors before him? This, this ninth doctor got it right. Yeah. And and when he regenerated, I was devastated. I was so sad. I was so upset. And I couldn't then they believe brought, that was what was going to happen. Correct. They brought David Tennant on and I was like, Freaking ponces. I can't believe they did this. Who's this jackass? Yeah. And I'm watching an entire episode thinking, who's this jackass? Yeah. And then the end of the episode where he's like getting, he's trying to figure out what clothing goes with his new body and yeah. all this stuff. And then he licks his teeth. And I'm like, oh, evil dude from Harry Potter. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. And he now, was in Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. And he was an evil dude. Evil dude. Oh, bad. Super bad. Yes, yeah, He's never read Harry or watched okay. Harry nah, Potter. Well, I don't have time for, for that. For those of us in the audience who have, he was... Barty Crouch Jr. Barty Crouch Jr. Who spent all the time taking the potion to be a poser. I don't to want to be give Brendan. too much away. Mm-hmm. Yes. For the two people She's who haven't read them than yet. I was about to spit it out. Yeah. He was, he was what? Barney Fife Jr.? In Harry Potter? Was yes, he was Barney mm-hmm. Fife. Oh, Barney Andy! Fife. You don't understand. I locked him in the cell. You really, and, uh, are you really going to mock David Tennant in There's front a guy. Of me? I have to Sorry. tell you this. There's a guy that does a comedy bit. I had to do a bit. voice. No. He does a comedy bit about ver- people who have very distinctive voices. Yes. So he talks there about. There are some. Because you know, it's not like you could go through life as Don Knotts. Exactly. And prank call people. You know, <laughs> ring, ring, ring. Hello. I've been looking at you through the bathroom window. Is this Don Knotts? Ah! Exactly. Exactly. And every time, so every time Don Knotts, that's all I can think of. Or people with really, like, you know, movie movie voice guy, you know, Mm. in a land. That guy? Yeah. Or Henry Kissinger. Hello, Um, Henry. Henry, 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 I've asked you to leave the studio. Henry, I've told you you're not welcome here anymore. You're going to have to go home. Speaking of movie voice guys, if you have Catherine Hepman, and I'm on Catherine, Catherine, you can go in the other room with Henry and the headless dog. (laughs) Go on. I wanted you Ka- to be on black, too. Catherine, <laughs> Catherine, you know how I feel about black. Cary Grant and Spencer to add me on Catherine, I'm, I'm going to turn off your microphone, I just thought I, I mean, just trying to regurgitate <laughs> our good bits, right? You know, you, you got to kind of pull the good bits back in. Okay, this bit worked, you know. Have you seen um, the Show trailer? 27. You know? The trailer for Comedian, the Jerry Seinfeld movie. It's old trailer. No, I haven't seen it yet. But um, Kimmy the, doesn't like Jerry Seinfeld. You don't have to like Jerry Seinfeld. It's just the trailer. Okay. Because the trailer is movie voice guy, and he goes into the booth. Yeah. Uh-huh. And stands there, and and they're like, you know, comedian trailer, take one. And he goes, in a land. It's not that kind of movie. Yeah. In a time. It's there not that go. kind of movie. Yeah. So they keep going, and anyway, it's the back and forth between the guy in the booth and then movie now, voice he's guy. The guy. I think who I have could seen be the that. Crank caller. Yeah, so he would be a he's great. He's the guy who you could because it would be <laughs> like he pick it up and it's like you know the music <laughs> and then you know yeah. Is your refrigerator running? Yeah, you know exactly. What? I think that's what I want to do with my life. I want to be. I want to be the movie voice Buffy the vampire guy. Slayer. Yeah. In a land far, and far away. And Debbie does Dallas. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I have to do enough of that. Anytime we watch a movie, and this makes him crazy. special effects, man. <laughs> this makes Dr. Normal absolutely crazy because our child is a little kid and cannot read as fast as stuff scrolls on the screen. Yeah. Anytime we watch a movie where there is important information at the beginning, yeah. I have to read it out loud. And so I adopt the voice. And I read it. Long ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Only normally it's a princess movie of some kind. And so I'm like reading the yep. stuff. Wait a minute. You have, is this with, with, with the kid? Yes. yes. So you, oh, is this when she gets in trouble and you adopt the voice from no, Doom? No, I'm, I'm talking. Oh, that would no, be I awesome. No, I do. She has the voice. <laughs> I do have the voice. <laughs> no, I'm talking about when, when I have to down. read. I'm <laughs> talking about when I have to read narration from a movie. Read stuff. Hey, yeah. that was a great impression of the voice from Dune. Thank you very much. That was did really awesome. That? I did. It was good. Okay, honey. I have to admit it. <laughs> yeah, I can't even do the impression because I just naturally, I just naturally now. have the voice. Get off the couch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh my God, she has the voice. I wonder if she has the gum jabar. <clears throat> I have the box that you box. shouldn't put your hand in. Was that the gum jabar? <laughs> no. Was that the gum jabar? Who sucks hatter at? I can't remember yeah. the name of the no, box. No, that was a ceremony, wasn't it? No, no, no. Quizzos I've got that box, though. He was though. the Quizzos hat. He was the Quizzos hat. Okay. Yeah. Man, i got to watch Dune again. I don't know. Bram's in the <laughs> chat room right now. I'm assuming hey, like, this will light up. Hey, Bram, what's the name up, of the right? box? Come on. Somebody tell us. There's got to be. It's the Gom Jabbar, wasn't it? I thought so. Yeah. Oh. That seems and I, oh, it, even no, when let I me read ask, the book, let me ask. I, I have thought, to ask something. Cool. This is really important. It's like a bubblegum thing. Because I am under the impression that I've been saying Bram's name wrong. Is it Bram or Brom? I thought it was Brom. Brom. Okay, I've been saying Bram, and I don't, I feel like a shit. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Knock just it off. Dial him into strange love. Did you just call? Did no, you? he called me. Oh, answer it. I don't care. <laughs> hey, you're on Strange Love answer Live. It. Go hey, ahead, John. take the no, phone call. No, I'm not. It's okay. Um, Mike, have we had enough to drink to drunk dial Steve Strong? Uh, I don't know if Steve yeah. Strong. Is that's like, well, he was on Twitter all day, so yeah. I, was, I thought of twittering him and going, "Hey, are you gonna be around later tonight?" <clears throat> Dude, I don't need. I have to address the chat room for a moment here. Okay. Giddy, I don't need someone to name my box. <laughs> I need to know the name of the box from Dune. That you put the hand in. That you put the hand in. No one's allowed to put their hand in my no, box. We had Thank that conversation last time, too. It's a seeker. It's, it's a, a seeker. seeker. Hunter seeker. Yeah. You, you ever watch that movie, Dune? The, the, oh, yeah. The, Which one? Well, now we both have, of them, right? We've, two we've, of them. Got, we've yeah. got the new one and the gold one. Yeah. Yeah. And and we've got this. Uh, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The thing about I had a hard one. time with about the old one is that there were like bits of book three. Exactly. It was yeah, just a they big five it, right? minutes into the movie, and I'm like, mm-hmm. well, the story goes that the De Laurentiis has edited it for a two hour movie, and it was just yeah. like because it was David Lynch and yeah. it was Dune, oh, and it yeah. was like a four hour movie. Of course it and was. And it was David Lynch. David Lynch. Hello. Have I mentioned it was David Lynch? I know. Because I mean, the visuals in that movie Fucked were up, man. Yeah. No joke. I love David Lynch, by the way. Fucked Phenomenal, up. but still. Fucked up, man. Yeah, clearly. Fucked up. I love him. Man. Love him. <laughs> yeah, we know. Eraser head. We know you oh, love him. Blue Velvet. Oh, you one know of what? the best movies. It's a good movie. I am. Um, Heineken. I've never Heineken. seen Eraser Head. I only watch horror movies if they're really campy and have Bruce Campbell in them. Oh, yeah. So are you watching Burn Notice? Because that has Bruce Campbell oh, in it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I wouldn't have ever watched it except for I saw that Bruce Campbell was in it. So I was like, ooh, ooh, Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Yay. I've heard it's good. I'm going to catch up on season one on Hulu. You should. Yeah, Hulu. Yeah, Hulu. I watched all, all of season one on Hulu. And they just started season two. Yeah, like so. last week or something. Yeah, yeah I think I, so, there's two episodes of season two. Also, speaking of awesome television, mm-hmm. they've brought back the gong show. <gasps> no way. Comedy Central, Dave Attell hosts I the gong show. I love Dave Attell. What, I was Dave just Attell. wondering the other day what Dave Attell has been up to. Yeah, you know what he, now you know what he's doing. He's hosting the gong show. That's, I got to go. Wow. I got to tell Tiva to get it for yes. me. Yes, and here's why it's awesome. I watched, the. they've, they've had precisely one episode. Oh, it debuted like HBO. last night. Comedy Central. Oh, Comedy, Comedy Central. Central. Oh, Central. Yeah. then we can get it. Yes. We have that. And so and last you want to get rid of my cable. The episode, the judges, they had three judges. Um, one of them was a, was a guy who's who I can't remember. And then um, Dave Navarro and Andy Dick. <laughs> I would gong Andy Dick off the stage anytime. I know. I'd be like, yeah, no. So they'd Don't midget- start talking. You just gone, <laughs> Andy. Midget wrestling on the gong show. Midget wrestling no yeah shit. but that's that's kind of midget wrestling but then the guy whose name i can't remember was basically like i'll take you both on right now <laughs> yeah. got down and they like went for it and it was kind of funny and um it's kind of howard sternish though a little bit yeah but th- like a lot of it 
super funny. I mean, the and original really Gong Show with the unknown comic. The I mean, unknown oh, comic. Oh, I loved man. the unknown comic. I mean, it, but you know what I really want him to bring back is Match Game. But the problem oh is, oh god, we have no Charles Nelson Riley today. That's right. To make that show worth watching, Match Game. Who would it be? Who would it be? You were a, a latchkey kid too, weren't you, Verso? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Out Match there game. in Legrand. Brahm says the pain box. Well, that's not the all. Pain box. That's just a description. It had a name. Yeah, I'm looking. It it's not saying the it's name. It's Conchabar. I think it might be Gomjabar. I think. Go Google Gomjabar and see what you get. Dude, how do you spell Gomjabar? G O M space J A B B A R. Gom J A B B A R. I have a hard time typing on the little. So we never made it back to Dr. Horrible. Google? Dr. Horrible yes, is Dr. awesome. Dr. Horrible. The laundromat song. The laundromat song is phenomenal. The laundromat. Nathan song. Fillion is in it. It and is. It is something bit, from Dune. Let's see. There is a bit. Um, I really don't want to spoil for Cammy, but he's Captain la, Hammer. La 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 so la 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 la. He talks la, la, about the hammer. Yeah. And it's, it's very funny. Oh, I saw he talks it when we were introduced the hammer. to Captain Hammer. Yes. Yeah, but he, well, he talks. He's ta- he is talking to Doctor Horrible about the hammer. Yeah, I, okay. I think I In think I got some references to now this on for the very Twitter. popular Strange Love segment. Cammy reads Wikipedia. Oh God! Oh, the Gom Jabar is a fictional device appearing in Frank Herbert's Dune universe. It's the box. According to terminology of the Imperium, the glossary of the novel Dune, the Gom Jabar is the high-handed enemy. That specific poison needle tipped with metacyanide. Used oh, by the Bene Gesserit that's Proctor it. That's what she holds in the at death his alternative when he's test got his of hand human in the awareness. Pain box. That's so yeah, the pain is. box is the pain box. Right. Oh, it is the pain box. Because she goes, box. "This that's is odd. the dreaded gum jabar." Yeah, I think Brahm is One right. One prick and Brahm, I'm very sorry. You. Well, we're close though. It's part. It was. It was part of the moment. The Here we go. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Yeah. Let's see. In Dune, Reverend Mother, I can't remember her name, uses a gum jabar to test Paul Atreides just prior to his departure to Arrakis. This hu- humanity test is carried out with a box that produces pain by nerve induction, causing severe pain that is strictly psychological. Only a human is considered to be able to withstand the urge to take the hand out of the box. Now read the Wikipedia page about diabetes, cock rings, and Seattle. That wasn't a Wikipedia okay. page. It was some other page. Okay, never mind. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's old hat. I read that on the Fabby show. Okay. Oh, hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. Hey, what's up? Okay, <clears throat> back to our little cable show. <laughs> oh my God, the Kong show, dude! Oh, I thought we were back to like cable access and we yeah. kind of are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're doing the cable access thing. Yeah, here. I hate to say this, but we've been talking for a really long time. Yes, we have. I kind of thought so too. I'm going to give us like ten more minutes, but okay. don't don't tell the people listening. Okay. Or something. <laughs> what there was other like geeky girl stuff we wanted to cover. Yeah, but I don't remember any of it now. I think that was before um, we the Wii is drinking. awesome. Guitar Hero is great. Wii is awesome. We're gonna have to have a Wii play date where we don't have to record a podcast. Yes. So that we can actually That's play right. the Wii together. Yes. Because I want to get onto that Cooking Mama so thing. So much fun. Cooking Mama is an awesome game. I I want to chop more vegetables. I'm like desperate to go out there and like chop more vegetables. <laughs> Speaking of Cooking Mama, I think I'm gonna have some more smoky sake. Smokehouse almond. Smokehouse almond. Sake. Awesome. We have we have people awake in the chat room. <gasps> Who's in the chat room? Let's see. Read Let's see off. everyone in the chat room. Do you know room. why? They're vampires. They're Brahm vampires. is in the chat room. Amber, Amber, Case Organic, is in the chat room. But Hi, she Amber. said she was going to go to sleep. So it's a big drama. Um, Giddy still with what? us. Ryan Thomas. I don't know you, Ryan Thomas. Hi, Ryan Thomas. Hi, hi Ryan. Ryan Thomas. I mean, hi, Ryan Thomas. Oh, yes. Hi, or, Ryan. Or... Hi, Ryan Thomas. Yeah, whichever you prefer. <laughs> you never know. You yeah, don't hey, know which you know, one he's going to want. Um, let's see. Who else do we have? We had oh, Will Raddick. Will's he still there. <gasps> is he? Will. Hi, Will Raddick. Hi, Will Raddick. I don't Raddick. see Will. Well, oh, I know. I can just go up to the yep. part where it shows everybody who's there. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Dr. Normal. Hi, Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normal. <laughs> Hi, Cammy Chaos. Hi, Cammy. Um, oh, oh, hello, 8U Stream Bot. Okay. Oh. So yeah. what else? What are you going to do this weekend? Anything? Kind of want to see The Dark Knight. Kiki? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Did it premiere tonight? Yes. yes. Well, technically well, it midnight, premiered last night. Last night so what's this? It's IMAX, right? Both. Okay. And the only IMAX in the immediate area is Bridgeport. Out there in Twalton. The Bridgeport Village. Yeah, Bridgeport Village. Yep. Yeah. I went and saw one of the Harry Potter Guessing there's probably there. a line out there. 
I'm sure there is. I think that Dr. Normal and I will do the sensible thing because I hear it's <laughs> almost three hours long. I think so. And we will wait till my mommy we'll gets pee here. before we go see the show. We'll pee before yeah. we see the show. We'll <laughs> we wait till my mommy go gets here. Seats. And we'll go say, in, oh, eat. mommy, have the six-year-old. We're going to go see Batman. Will they have an yes. intermission if it's a three-hour? Oh, I don't they know. They didn't do an intermission in Lord of the Rings and... Couple, and they were and long. One of those was three and mm-hmm. a lot of change. Th- this kills me because Hollywood and for and half, many years has just put the kibosh on anything over two hours. Oh, you, yeah. You know, just for I'm years excited. and years. I'm yeah. so excited. My mom says she will not see it in the theater because she can't sit in a movie theater for three hours. She's like, that's that's crazy. Yeah. But, oh, the tomorrow thing- is my mom and dad's wedding anniversary. Okay. Happy anniversary, mom Great. and dad. Enjoy Hellboy. Yeah, no, they don't. My parents okay. refuse to watch the show. Wow. Because I'm a naughty girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They'll read my blog. Because then they can choose to like you know skip so did, over things that yeah. are right, but so they did, won't. Did they you won't show listen. everybody a close up of your chest? <laughs> I could go take it up to the camera. Yes. Okay. I don't know if there's enough light to show it. So though. in in honor of um, of Verso. This is our nerd girl, girl play date. And I, That's right. And all the nerdiness that that entails. That's right. Because it is pretty friggin' oh, no. nerdy. You'll have to. Oh no, you're right there. There you go. Oh, well, you're a little close there. Yeah. You can back off the, the thing there. And they, I think I'm too. They can't see. see it. I don't think they can see it. I think this is sad. All right. You can't see it. Never I mind. Don't think it's sad. I think it's sad. We'll yeah. twit pick it or something. Yeah. That's what we should do. That's true. We should yes. take a twit pick of it. There we go. Let me get my camera out. So it's it's a wee dog tag. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really cool. We have two of them in the house. Okay, we do. They're they're well. It was a matching set of two. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. The other one's just a Wemo. Oh, I guess dog tags come in pairs, don't yeah, they? Yeah, the other one went to a smaller person. Okay. Um, it happens. So what else? Um, let's see. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Trek. Did we cover that? Star Wars. What? Oh no, Star Trek. Well, oh. so here's the thing. I was disappointed by all three of those Star Wars movies. I was pretty much disappointed by them too. But the first one wasn't so bad for me because. At the time, my roommate had a seven-year-old daughter, eight-year-old daughter. Can I tell you daughter. the trick to that? The yeah. trick is to hold down the camera button and then... Oh, my God. There's a lot of boob involved in this picture. And then let go. Once you get it where you want it to be, so that you don't have to push... Like, hold the camera button down until you line up and get where you want to go, and then just let go. That makes it a little easier I sometimes. I wonder how much my breasts I can crop out. <laughs> Probably not much. You should hold, like lean back and pick it up a little higher and... It's not that I'm shy about showing my breasts. It's that they really so, d- detract from so the So these necklace. are easy sound bites. Okay. Are we having like a pop quiz? Is I think you ought to know. I'm feeling very depressed. Life. That's, that's, Mar- or that's the Marvin the Paranoid, Marvin the Paranoid, Paranoid Android. Android. That's right. I adore But that's from the original. That's not... Around here. Putting can't fill the emptiness inside me... Oh, Captain help. Murphy, rest in peace. We miss you, Harry Gauze. Harry Gauze or Henry? Harry, yeah. Did you Harry watch C Lab 2021? Oh. Captain Murphy, there's never a bad Hesh. time for pudding. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember him. Yeah, Captain Murphy. Good man. This is my when, he, when he passed away, his son came on the show. Nice. Here. What in Judas Rock and Priest is going on around here? <laughs> pudding can't fill the emptiness inside me. But it'll help. <laughs> Judas Rock and Priest. That's awesome. What in Judas Rock and Peace is going on here? So Mrs. Right. Josh Bancroft today, mm-hmm. Rachel, said mm-hmm. to him, for the love of toast. For the love of toast. Get yourself an actual meal. Because he was complaining about I how like, he didn't eat breakfast. <laughs> I saw that. For some reason, Sorry. I just thought you were going to say, for the love of toast, get yourselves a real show. <laughs> oh, I thought, he was, I thought she was going to say, for the love of toast, stop wearing bright orange Crocs. Oh no! Oh, I can't help oh. it. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not a huge fan of the croc yeah. wearing in public. Pretty yeah. public about that. Yeah. But it was very entertaining, and so. But so other than that, that I think that he's a lovely person. Yeah. I just my and I should also say that my daughter's godfather has a tendency Same towards thing. bright orange Crocs, and wow. and oh, just well, Dave. Josh's reasons are geeky. I know that. Is it something about static RSS? mm Hmm. Because the RSS icon is orange and white. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that's why. You know, I read a really interesting post on Silicon Floors today. Really? And mm. it really piqued my curiosity because it, it combined um, geekiness yes. with tattoos. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. What's, I read the, that what's too. the convention? What's Oscon. The, Oscon is 10 people. They'll pay for you to get a tattoo yeah. if it's open source or just really geeky. Yeah. Like get a penguin tattoo. If like you want the penguin. You, you have to sign something. up for it. Or, yeah. The, uh, well, you the, could get your open source. The BSD daemon. Um, but they said just generally geeky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, <gasps> internet based. The and Ubuntu, I think you described the Ubuntu I could get the Rebel something. Alliance tattoo. Symbol on my shoulder. Is that what you're telling me? I don't know. I you'd have to talk to them. How but could you that not submit, be and then ten people they'll select ten people to get the free tattoo. Wow. But then you have to be willing to go and show off the tattoo at the party on Thursday. And so my brain immediately goes, Crap, "Yes, what do I need? What tattoo do I need that's really really geeky and internet based?" And then I'm thinking, does does like getting my website tattooed on myself count? Because that's <laughs> really geeky, right? Because that's geeky. my Open ID account. Yeah. Right? Does mm-hmm. that count? And then I was like, God, I don't think I'll be available on Ooh, Thursday. The, the open ID symbol or something. Yeah. Like a little symbol. So no, I'm have. tempted just because I love tattoos. Cool. And then I'm like, God, that's, you know, an yeah. awesome opportunity to do something really Completely. memorable yeah. tattoo wise. So I don't know though. Interesting. Yeah. I'm still considering tattoos. I'm as yet unmarked. You're still really? thinking about it? Yeah. Wow. What's wrong with you? You live in Portland. Oh, I wish I knew. I don't Jeez. drink beer either. Oh my God. Either. I'm outnumbered. Yeah. Oh. Really? He doesn't have any tattoos either. What are you giving me crap for? Unscathed. Because I can. You didn't know that? I, I have virginal flesh over there. Wow. I think of that every time I touch it, too. It's clean. It's untainted <laughs> by ink. I'm going to lick the clean skin. Yeah. No, yeah. That's why I'm going to get a hula girl on my forearm. Okay? <laughs> so. Dude. There was a tattoo. Oh, yes. I think I'm going to get a black dahlia. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I'm seriously thinking about it. Will you start wearing pearls with it too? <laughs> so I do like yeah, yeah, I like yeah, yeah. I like pearls. I just you yeah, know. yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Awesome. I have this one really really yeah, great Donna blog, Reed dress. So I just use Twitter. You know? I have this great Donna Reed blog. dress, but it's all black and it's sheer. It's like totally cut like a Donna Reed dress, but it's sheer black. Wow! I love that dress. I can see that getting. Yeah, it, I usually it's very kinky nowadays. I just wear it for Halloween. Yeah. If I'm a witch, I'll put a little black dress underneath it too, because then the, all the neighborhood kids are like, "Look, it's Kay's mommy, and why yeah. is she naked under her dress?" Yeah. Ah. So, Doctor, uh, why don't you have a blog? Because he's lazy. He no, doesn't have to not, write on it every day. It's not true. You don't have to write it's on it every day because he has no time to do anything. I barely have enough time to do this. <clears throat> yeah, my husband's a tiny. Have I mentioned the bathroom? A tiny wee bit overscheduled. Uh, yeah, now let's be fair. How much work have you had to do on the Actually, bathroom? Actually, this is a really good plug because we want to redesign our websites and everything, and we yeah. realize that we don't have time to delve no. into it. So we need a little. So we'd rather very do poorly, very very yeah. poorly paid web designer. Yeah, paid? somebody who wants paid? to be paid in like podcast guest hosts and tiki drinks yeah and also in and in just good share in this episode of strange love brought to you by the person who did my website exactly that would be phenomenal um so if you are a person who does websitey stuff you might want and you yes. want you know di- we actually we dictator talked about this yeah. on your ass we talked about this earlier right. and it was really the fact that there are different kinds of people Exactly. And there are mm-hmm. some people who are like, I just want to go write on the website. I don't really give a crap how it works. I just want to be able to go put things there. I want right. to write, exactly. write, write. I want it to be content and that's all I want it to be. And then there are people who go, I just want to play around on the back end. I want to line right. things up and give it tables right. and write right. things. I dream in CSS and mm-hmm. I don't give a crap about writing for the website. I don't want to put any content up there. With I just the, want to make it look neat. With the exception of I like to make little art pieces for my headers and stuff. Yes. I don't enjoy the... Yeah. But that's kind of content, though. That it it is. Stuff. It's brand. I mean, it's like... It's it, more brand you know, than anything else. We can else. sit around and figure this all out and a lot of free time, but it's just... Maybe at some point we'll have the podcast edited together because I just realized that that was another story I told half of. <laughs> Which one? I hope some of them have ends. Learning uh, to knit. Oh. And making uh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Because I made I think we told small. half of some stories. We told half a lot of stories. Um, Maybe we'll have to have Verso on the show. Works, though. The this geek, is the content. It's the dead end okay, but here geek it is. girl the story. The geek intersection. Cliffhangers. Yeah, cliffhanger. Come bum, back for bum, the next bum. episode. Well, it's like a... Uh, Dramatic um, hamster. Um, Doctor Who? Nate said on... on. You mean Khatul? Yeah, on uh, the... Oh, help me out here. The It's hazelnut. Hazelnut. Uh, the, it's hazelnut, isn't it? It's tech Brom, talk, tech Amber. Talk. Is it hazelnut tech, tech talk? talk? 
Prom, oh, yeah. They Prom have their Amber. own show now. They're doing their own show. Uh-huh. It's very cool. Very in-depth. I t- hopefully, there's a new episode this week. Nice. It's been a couple episodes. Yeah. Um, oh, I was right. Was it was on. Hazelnut Tech Talk. Yay. And, awesome. Um, and he, he commented that, you know, it just, it's, it's just a series. Of, we get into a little bit like of open. it, then just drop it yeah. and we talk about ourselves. So you know, I'll be damned like, if I don't finish this one. So here's the end. Okay. Okay. That's I learned. That doesn't I was, oh, works. wait. I'm going to interrupt you. <laughs> See? See? <laughs> See? I told you. It's not about me, though. It's all about us. Brahm says every Monday. Every, every Monday. Monday. All okay. right. Monday, Thank Monday, you, Monday. Yeah. Oh, I, and Amber also said it. She said it first, to be oh, fair. Oh, hazelnut. Go, Amber. Wait. Aren't you supposed to be in bed? No. Amber. Lullaby. Okay, okay. And good night. What? Okay, Verso, tell your story. You're actually, drink- you're actually drinking. You're actually I'm not singing. drinking. <laughs> you're I'm always like, a, no, I can't sing. So here it I was. can't sing, okay. but I did it anyway. Okay. She's anyway, just back talk to me. Yeah. She, she must tell the this. story. Tell it. She's used to us by now. Go ahead. <laughs> so I was, learning, I was trying to learn to knit and found a pattern. And I thought, oh, you know, this might be something I could actually do. It seemed reasonably small, and it seemed like something I could do when I was learning to when I was trying to learn to purl, as well as knit. And it is You're a, scaring me. No. Okay. Because crochet is a lot easier. It's one one stick, and yarn, and that's it. Knitting mm. is two sticks. Yes. So anyway, I think I've crocheted before. Continue. Yeah. It's pretty easy. So, but I was trying to learn this other stitch, and I was kind of in this phase with knitting where. Um, every time I did a project, I wanted to do something, I wanted to try and learn something new out of it. Like I want to learn how to do this stitch or I want to learn how to do the, you know, change colors or I want to learn how to, you know, different things. So I found this pattern and went, I think this is something I could actually make. So I started it and it was from, it started at the bottom and went up as Mm -hmm. most patterns do start at the bottom, went up. So So I'm like Plurk then. Yes. (laughs) So... Yeah, which becomes relevant in a minute because this is about this is really about the intersection of of geekeries, and so I get about halfway through it, and I held it up to take a good look at it, and Mr. Fishbones took one look at it and went, "Oh my God, are you actually knitting a Star Trek dishcloth?" <gasps> and I said, "Why, yes. As a matter of fact, I am. I have a pattern that puts that Starfleet Delta." Uh-huh. On a dishcloth. So when you're ready to knit and then learn to purl, you too can make the Star Trek dishcloth. I'm so going to make a Star Trek dishcloth. I, I know, also have a pattern for like the one. Autobot logo on a dishcloth. I'm going to make all my own Oh, you heard me. <laughs> and they're all going to be totally geeky awesome. They're really awesome. I have a few different patterns for ones that are actually really functional too, like kind of scrubby on the one side. And mm-hmm. So here's a question from the chat yeah. room. Okay. And that is, do you have to learn to sew before you learn how to knit? No. No, they are unrelated activities. Sewing is go. putting together two pieces of fabric. Generally, when you're knitting or crocheting, you are creating fabric of your own there to you do go. something with. So no, you do not need to learn to sew first. There's much, much interest in the Twitterverse of this knitting. <laughs> yeah, that you know so the of. yarn, the, let, let's the crittering. Say, let's say, let's, first of all, let's say that we'll radic. Maybe, maybe, maybe my little be interested in the That's right. learning to knit. That would be awesome. We should try to get him to join I us. really want him to show up. I want there to be boys at the yarn up. Boys, please. Oh, the yarn up. That's what we're calling it. I'm so excited. Well, somebody else came up with a much better word, and I'm not going to remember who it was, but it was crittering because it was crocheting and, knitter- and knitting and Twitter. Do you have a website? Crittering. Not yet. But It'll- you will. And an RSS feed <laughs> and a podcast. <laughs> And well, a, and a stream. A oh, live you know what? If you guys stream. don't work the web designer to death, then I'm wondering. Exactly. I'm wondering if maybe I don't know if there's a podcast around. And we will, by the that's way. kind of strange and loving that might be interested in doing a live <gasps> podcast you from a yarn up. That would be awesome. Wow. So the crittering was really the crittering idea was I thought very awesome because because I was basically trying to get the word out. I want to do a get together and have it be yarn. It, if you want to crochet with it, that's fine. If you want to knit with it, that's fine. If you want it to be super bulky yarn because you're making really warm scarves, that's fine. If it's really fine because you're making socks, also fine. I, I want, don't really care. I, I just socks. want people who are into yarn or maybe want to be into yarn or at least want to learn more to show up. And I want to do it um, twisted is on Northeast Broadway and they're on Twitter and they have a blog and they're very cool. Cool. And so I'm going to see if maybe it's something that they 
would be interested in hosting because I don't know how many people I'm going to end up with. And I think I'm going to have to move it. I had given you, it, there was. You gave week. us two dates. You said yeah. August 2nd or August 9th, and I cannot do August 2nd. And, and neither can you. I can't do August 2nd. <laughs> and I don't think I can do the 9th because I don't remember which weekend is the 48-hour film festival. But the weekend oh. of the 48-hour film festival, I'm very, very busy. Mm-hmm. So it may end up being the weekend after the 9th. Okay. And I'm not sure if it's going to be like Saturday or Sunday. And I'll be asking that. I really need, Maybe I need to just go whip up the blog spot blog for that. And I think you do. And move on with my day. Or maybe yarn dot bana- the banana verse or something. 48-hour so. film. Yes. Festival. Oh Portland. Gosh. Type Portland at oh. the end and it'll give you the actual dates. Something. Well, I don't remember what. Um, so particularly if you are a boy. Yeah, August 8th. August 8th. Okay, yeah. so the weekend after that is probably when I'll do it. Um, if you're a boy and you're interested in yarn or you want to knit or you want to come out of your knitted closet or your crocheted closet or whatever it is. August 16th or 17th. Yeah. Yeah, 16th or 17th. Okay. okay. Um, that weekend. We want to do it. And we would really love to have you there. And if you are a girl who is just interested in learning more, whether it's yarn, whether it's crocheting, whether it's knitting, if you're good at knitting and you want to learn to crochet, which sometimes is nice. I've seen like um, a crocheted collar on a knitted sweater because they look very different. Yeah, they do. I've and that kind that. of stuff is really cool. So if you want to learn how to do the other one because you can't, and you also maybe want to learn to do something nerdy, maybe I'll see if I can get the okay from the person who wrote the Star Trek pattern to distribute the Star Trek dishcloth nice. pattern. Or, you know, we can have an auto, bo- like somebody doing Autobots and somebody else doing Decepticons and you can pick a side or whatever you want to do. Um, there's a lot of nerdy yarn stuff out there to do. And I think we should do it. And even if you're like me and you've never knitted a thing in your life, someone will be happy to show you. And that's really the, one of the things about knitting and crocheting that I really like is that people who are into it are happy to help you. So whenever I've had a question or something, I've just went and spent a little bit of time at one of the places where um, they have the space for you to sit and, mm-hmm. and work on what you're working on and then be able to just go to someone who works there and go, I'm really having trouble with this and I can't Let put me it ask together you, how it you, needs to. And Do you know where Betsy and her daughter took knitting classes? That was Twisted. That was Twisted, okay. On Broadway, yeah. See, I pay attention. Yes, and that was where. And it was great. And awesome. Um, I took an amigurumi class there to learn to make little Japanese crocheted dollies. Aww. They're adorable. And it's super fun. So, and there's a lot you can, I mean, you can make dishcloths or if you're me, you can make a pouch to put your stereo face in. You can make um, a little drawstring bag for the power adapter for your power book so that it doesn't get all scratched My up. My MacBook. Yeah. My MacBook that I'll have Mine seen. is a power, yeah. <laughs> Mine is a power book and that's the one mm-hmm. I made. But well. When did you for, get your power book? I got my power book a bajillion years ago. Mm-hmm. But my company issued me a laptop because I was doing a lot of travel. Mm-hmm. So they issued me a laptop and that laptop is a MacBook Pro. And that's the one I actually made the pouch for. Mm-hmm. Because, um, in case you didn't know it was a geek already. Uh, I the, didn't. My power book. Uh-huh. Um, I have a pouch for the brick for that. And it is the um, baggie from a bag of Birdie Bots Every Flavor Beans. Ooh. Because it fit. That's really all it was. Yeah, you know what? You got to do what you got to do. Exactly. Um, Will Raddick says we should check out Scrap. Where is Scrap? Uh, North Portland by Williams and Fremont. Okay. Stands for School and Community Reuse Action Project. Oh, they yeah. Have, I've heard of them. Yeah. So we'll 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 check out the... I'll save the chat room so we yeah, can I'll, I'll check see out what further they have information. Say, yeah. um, um, another place that's um, really cool that I want to check out is a place called Yarnia. Mm-hmm. Like Narnia, but yeah, with yarn. but yarn. And it's like close in. Like, and Like Narnia, but nerdier? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Shut up, biatch. And, uh, I'm going to knit you some comfy little undies and you're going to parade around in them and be my bitch. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I do mean that too. I have thoughts in that area. We can talk later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love my lovely, lovely. Careful, because if she's on a hot streak and it's your ball gag, it's all over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he'll wear it if I tell him to. <laughs> <laughs> so Yarnia, you can you can buy yarn by the pound. Awesome. Yeah, which looks really cool. They have like giant cones, and they will they you get this little cone of like I need you know this much, and the uh-huh. really cool thing about it is it's like um, all one dye lot, mm-hmm. so that you don't end up having to match those up. Yeah, and it's also that. one string. 
like one continuous mm-hmm. so you don't have to knot them off and tuck the ends in and work with all that stuff so you know if you want to make a sweater you just go to them and buy enough to make your sweater maybe mm-hmm. a little extra and then you're you know you're done i have to say something now to everyone in the world concerning dye lots this is very important whether you're talking about socks or fabric or clothing that you want to match or bedding or you're getting your couch recovered and I'm not joking. If you're going to go and you have a couch, you're getting it recovered or something, mm-hmm. make sure that they know that you want all the fabric to be from the same dye lot. Yes. Say, I want the fabric to all be from the same dye lot because I have seen some and if horrible you've ever disasters. Wondered, why, why does that matter? Go look at a couch and go, there's just no safe place to rest your eye. It's because it's different dye lots. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Like, look, the cushions will be a completely different color than yeah. the body of the sofa. Do the carpets match the drapes? Exactly. Do the carpets Heavens match no. the drapes? Okay. And I spent and too much tragedy. time working at an interior design firm to let anyone go out and get things without matching dye lots. Yeah. It's a bummer. I'm and very And in yarn, it's the same thing. Yeah. And, and on that note, we've been talking for like 17 hours. Yeah. I think it's been like all, yeah. Ooh. But it looks like uh, Will has provided us with a, a website for scrap. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Will. Now, Will, if we don't end up... At Scrap, will you still come to the yarn up? Yeah, even if it's not at Scrap, even if we have to have it, like, in somewhere else. somewhere else. Even if we have to have it at a private location in someone's backyard where we have to bring our own alcohol in yeah. order to try to suffer through. Would you still show? I'm hoping he will. Come on, Will. Let us know. Peer pressure, peer pressure. Do it, Will. Do it. Does he say? Uh, I don't... I will. Oh, yeah, indeed I shall. You can <gasps> find out later on Twitter. Thank you, Will. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody.